Don't make me laugh. Because I will. <laughs> right. isn't always necessary to speak mine. Uh, call the select board uh, to order. Today is May 7, 2019. Um, to get us started this evening, we're going to begin with the swearing in of Mark Doxer. So why don't we get that underway? Do you have anything you'd like to swear on? Yes. Do we have the booklet? Anything you'd like to swear at? I solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me as a member of the select board according to the best of my ability and understanding, agreeably to the Constitution and laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and the bylaws of the town of Reading. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, sure. All right. Let's take a photo of the start with liaison reports. It should be, I think, on the shorter side today. Mm. Uh, Andy, I'll start with you. I went to a couple meetings, but in the interest of time, I will um, pass it to Mark. <laughs> okay. I don't think I'm the liaison to anything yet, so I don't think I'm the liaison to anything yet. And I imagine you're in the same situation? I am. Okay, John? I, well, I'm going to make up for what they're not doing. <laughs> I've got a few that I have to catch up on. Um, first and foremost, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about uh, our CASA. Um, they met as they do um, on, I think, the fourth Thursday is when we meet, um, April 25th. And um, a lot of updates going on, actually. Um, the um, Erica was um, hosting uh, two workshops, uh, Parent University on March 30th, um, which was on understanding the changing landscape of vaping and intro to mental health first aid. She also spent two days at Austin Prep working with an eighth grade group, which I think is great that um, that's going on there. Um, <clears throat> the um, the ongoing data collect that always happens around this time of year um, in the middle schools wrapped up in late April, and uh, we should be seeing the results of that, I would say, um, probably in June, uh, mid to late June would be my guess. Um, the um, kind of in the what's new category, um, um, our cost has been recruiting youth within the schools to work on the vaping prevention outreach program, especially in the middle schools, which is great. Um, matter of fact, there's an upcoming um, community conversation focused on that, um, and that's going to be hosted by Senator Lewis. It's going to happen on May 15th at the American Civic Center in Wakefield. Um, there's always a lot going on over there, and you know, we spend an hour just getting caught up every time we're together. Um, but one thing I would like to do is um, read just a, a short memo, if I could, um, and it has to do with the outstanding ARCASA Youth Leader of the Year. Um, Mason Hayes, a senior at Reading Memorial High School, has served on two ARCASA-related leadership projects during his high school years. Last year, Mason was trained as a peer leader on ARCASA's student outreach team on vaping prevention. And Mason was one of six students that developed an entertaining game show to bring to Parker Middle School to educate children in grades six through eight on vaping prevention. 
Mason went a step further in his presentation to students <clears throat> by sharing his personal experience with learning about vaping. As a younger RMHS student, Mason was caught vaping and attended the Arcasa Chemical Health Education Program. Following his participation in the program, Mason discontinued his use of vaping products and shared the positive benefits from stopping, including an improvement in his athletic performance and overall health. Mm. Mason's willingness to share his story was well received by the middle school students. When recruiting for this year's group to conduct similar programs, three separate classes of ninth graders recalled Mason visiting their school. Mason has made an impact in conducting outreach to younger peers. Mason also participated in the 2017-18 Reading Peer Leaders Project on Healthy Relationships, which included intensive training through the Game Change Program and biweekly meetings with peers and adult advisors. Mason will be attending Regis College next year, and Arcasa is very proud to honor Mason as Arcasa's outstanding Youth Leader of the Year with a small, very small scholarship grant to go along with that to help him with half a book. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, um, so I, I did want to, you know, take a minute to focus on him. Um, it was, you know, I think it's very interesting when the young people step up and recognize the problem and mm -hmm. um, recognize positive solutions and this young man has done that um, the other thing to make a note of because it's uh, coming up tomorrow um, is the teen dating violence awareness um, that's going to be going on at the Reading Police Department tomorrow um, Wednesday May 8th from 6 to 7 30 so I hope we have a good turnout there I think that's a really productive way for some time to be spent um, the other thing in not exactly a committee but I'm liaison to the um, one of the projects that's going on in town. I'd like to keep us up to date on that. Uh, the Postmark Project, um, which is, of course, the old um, post office. The foundation, as I'm sure most of us know, the foundation excavation continues. They, I think they're going to China with it. I mean, it's deep. Uh, and, uh, you know, that was kind of a conscious decision that they made rather than utilize there was some thought originally in the plans that they were going to utilize the con existing concrete cut and paste and they, they just kind of decided to do the right thing and pull it all out and start over from scratch um, just from a general standpoint it um, it's going to improve the way everything works you know wastewater management all of those kinds of things um, so that's continuing um, I think it's important to note that this project is precisely on schedule um, they've got it laid out in a very systematic way um, they're hoping that uh, there'll be completion and based on what they've done so far uh, I think they'll hit this date July 2020 is when everything should be complete and you know ready for occupancy so that's kind of the plan one of the things that you will see rising soon um, is uh, first step is you put an elevator pit slab. I'm learning a lot about construction. Um, and you know, a lot of people have seen downtown, uh, you know, down on Main Street at the Snookle Project, you know, the elevator tower goes up first. And it's kind of stark when it goes up. Um, and I'm just kind of giving everybody a heads up that we're going to have a similar thing that will be happening at the Postmark Project. The building is built around that. That all has to happen first. So that's one of the things that we're going to be seeing coming up soon. Um, happy to report we have no neighborhood complaints either to the developer or here at Town Hall, which is very positive in my opinion. Could have something to do with the fact that on a particularly dusty day, um, the project superintendent was wandering around with car wash tickets and <laughs> handing them out to everybody that he felt really got negatively affected. They're really, this is kind of a I think it's a poster child for how projects ought to happen. I mean, the um, you know the, what's going on, um, you know things will come up. So, for example, um, it was concrete day, and four concrete trucks showed up at once. You can only fit one in there at a time. Um, they made a call to town hall. They said, look. We got concrete trucks everywhere, but we got it figured out. We're going to stage them one at a time. They're going to come off of Sanborn, you know, around onto Haven for a brief bit and then into the project. Um, I think that when, in, in, in construction projects, stuff always happens. It's just kind of the nature of what happens. 
but these developers are trying to stay ahead of it, keeping the town advised, and um, I think in general, um, we're going to continue to see an excellent on-time project, and from their perspective, they're hoping for an on-budget you know, project as well. So that's my catch-up. Thanks, John. Um, my update is uh, Andy and I are part of the Volunteer Appointment Subcommittee, and we've been meeting with um, new and returning volunteers. Um, so nothing to report yet. We're hoping to have those recommendations for our first meeting in June for full board approval. All right. Uh, I have one question, sure. Madam Chair. I, re I remember that um, Andy, there was one week that you were possibly going to be out of town or on one, one day. Yeah. Are, are we covered? Do we need to have someone stand in for you for? We scheduled the meetings just around. Oh, okay. Meeting, uh, Perfect. Yeah. Very good. Yes, thank you. Um, all right, so uh, moving right along to the town manager report. Thank you. Just I'm going to read a couple quick things. Uh, one, we got a, a, a letter from MassDOT talking about the paving of uh, Route 28. Uh, they are going to start in the south section by the Stoneham line, presuming the uh, MWA's water main work isn't in the way. Um, they do estimate that the project is going to take 502 calendar days. So I had been asked questions as recently as this morning, and then I got this. And um, you know, could they do it in a year? And I said, well, if the weather's perfect, I, they might, but there's no way with 502 days. Uh, and that assumes average weather. So this will definitely go in the next spring. My understanding is they'll go up to the train tracks this construction season and probably stop there and then pick it up. And I'm not sure if they'll come south from the north or go north from here, from the square up to the uh, North Reading line. Um, so that'll be a, a major project and a major inconvenience. Um, we have not heard what construction hours they want to work. When we've worked with other projects, uh, more going east-west, they're very sensitive to rush hour. And they try to work around that. So it might start at 10 o'clock. Uh, and be sensitive to the two different directions. The north-south ones are pretty obvious. Um, I have a letter here that I'd just like to read quickly. It's to the Honorable Vanessa Alvarado Chair. Uh, pursuant to my recent conversations with the town manager that, regarding the town's budget priorities, <coughs> I'm pleased to inform the Reading Select Board that several local initiatives have been approved for state funding assistance as part of the FY20 House budget. The following year, marks were included in the House budget as a result of a series of amendments I filed with Representative Haggerty, and this is from Representative Jones. $60,000 for the purchase of an elder and human services van, $50,000 for pedestrian cross lot, crosswalk lights on Lowell Street, and $75,000 for safety improvements at Reading Memorial High School. Um, I've also talked to Senator Lewis, as has Representative Jones. Um, they're coming out with a budget sometime, possibly even today, but this week certainly. And um, you know, we're hopeful that the Senator will also include uh, some version of those same amendments. And then when the two bodies get together, uh, they'll remember to include all of them in the final budget. So I just wanted to give you that update. Okay, thank you. Um, the board has received, or in, at least in one case not received, um, several emails on Haverhill Street most mm -hmm. recently from uh, Fred Van Magnus. I have to track down who did and who didn't get it, and we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, but broadly speaking, um, this is an issue that a couple board members have replied to that I'm aware of because that's been copied. Um, certainly it's up to the chair and the body as to when to take this up again as discussion. But we did ask a legal question of town council about 10 days, almost two weeks ago, and he's just been swamped with town meetings, not only from Reading but from others. But I'm going to reach out to him again tomorrow and ask the question, and that'll help guide whatever the path is forward. Um, honestly, we've heard two conflicting things from the state, so we need to get to the bottom of that. Um, so I just wanted to update you on that. And then lastly, I did want to thank the water department. Um, as, as you know, we did have a water main break in Stoneham. Um, Reading had the foresight in joining the MWA of insisting redundancy, um, and it certainly paid off. They're also really clever. They figured out some, uh, I call it water geometry, of how to not care that there was a problem in Stoneham by re-roading a lot of water mains. So it's, it's really a very creative bunch. Um, I think the actual impact on the town of Reading was very small. I think that we got reports of some rusty and discolored water for a short period of time. But what really could have been a disaster, water is something we all assume you turn the faucet on, and there it is. Um, you know, there's a lot of thought and a lot of effort and a lot of planning behind that. And uh, you know, I'm very thankful that we're able to avoid a real problem with that. That's all I have. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. 
right, um, so we'll move on to public comment. A couple of guidelines if anyone is um, interested in speaking today. So I'd like to ask that public comments be kept under what is under the purview of this board. Uh, derogatory remarks will not be allowed. Uh, election campaign related comments are discouraged. Uh, due to open meeting law, the board is unable to engage with the public when comments arise. Um, so when we thank you for your comment um, and only are able to provide information but not actually engage, please know that's why. Uh, if you'd like to have us add something to a future agenda, we can certainly do that. Um, and announcements of town events are always encouraged, so if you're watching from home, please do feel free to come in at future meetings. This is a great time to let the community know what's going on. So, uh, with that, I will open it up to public comment. Please raise your hand. Hi. Good evening, and I'll keep this brief. I know you have a lot on the agenda tonight. <coughs> I'm actually here tonight um, as chair of the cemetery board, just as kind of an update uh, to apprise you of what's been happening uh, in the cemeteries. Um, last year, we spent about six months working on reorganizing um, the rules for the cemetery. Most of you are aware of that um, happened um, in about six months leading up to last May 1st. May 1st, we uh, had a our public hearing, and after that, uh, we actually um, just, you know, put the information out there. It was in the DPW report that came out in May, the June issue, actually, the DPW newsletter, which had some of those rules. It's very important for people to understand that they're not new rules. The biggest problem that we're having was the rules had not for a while been enforced. And that led to kind of a, a little bit of a problem. Um, I want to make you aware that when the cemetery workers, who work very hard to maintain our cemeteries, um, when they mow and weed whack, if there were small objects, trinkets, coins, marbles, and so on on stones, they become objects of, you know, which could hurt a worker or a visitor. So we just tightened up things, tried to reorganize them in better groups within the rules, and um, things kind of seemed to go fairly smoothly. We had um, quite a, we had an article in the, there was an article on the front page of the Chronicle shortly after that. Um, Bill Brown and I came at your request in July and just surprised you of, again what the problem, what the issue was and why we were taking on that. Uh, however, this spring, as it gets warm and Memorial Day is approaching and so on and so forth, um, we've received several complaints. I don't know if you've said it's been a lot on social media too. Some of the complaints have come to Town Hall. Michael Halloran has been handling those very well. Um, we're not trying to keep families and friends from um, honoring their loved ones with decorations, but they've gotten out of hand. So in working with that, um, both through the town hall and through the workers at the cemetery, they know a lot of the visitors who come on a regular basis and they talk to them and explain them. And most people are very, um, once it's explained, they're really okay with it and they understand. Um, some of the cemetery workers uh, have had a few incidents where People have come to the cemetery and because they're there working, receding and so on and so forth, they have literally screamed for 45 minutes at some of the cemetery workers about, you know, what were we thinking and why are we doing these things and so on. So I just, we just wanted to, as a board, we met last week, uh, again, with Memorial Day coming, just make sure that you're aware of what's happening and why and that we're really, you know, everybody is really working toward just having the cemetery safe for the workers and also aesthetically pleasing to everyone. So that's you know kind of where we're at. Um, as we're also putting up some new signs, one of the only other major issue we have in the cemeteries, and I think people do it with the great intention, they pull when they come to the cemetery, they pull off the road onto the grass. That makes more work for the cemetery guys because especially if it's been raining or whatever, it digs up the grass and they have to work on it. And to be perfectly honest, there are people buried on that grass. <laughs> and I don't think people even think about that. So I think we just want to remind people that stay on the grass, um, new signs are being printed that say park on the road, not the grass. And we're putting up new entrance signs, which hit the major um, things about, you know, only flowers, no other, you know, you know, planting trees, hedges, you know, that kind of thing. And so those signs at the entrances will be going up because the ones that are up there are getting really, really shabby. And so we decided to put the ones up. So 
as I said, I just wanted to let you know what's happening. If you have any feedback, that, you know, that, that would be the reason. So, okay. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Uh, if anyone has questions about what the rules are, both the existing and, and any new enforcement, the information is all available on the website, it correct? Is, it Under is. the cemetery at the page? Sign, at the cemetery, we'll have Great. the link to it, you know, the rules, you know, to, to get to the, all the rules on the website. Great. And if anyone has any questions or don't, doesn't have internet access, you can absolutely call town hall, be directed to the appropriate staff, and they can explain the rules. Thank you. Anybody else for public comment? Okay. All right. Um, so the Reading Garden Club is having their annual plants. I believe we have some. Hello. And I understand from the big sign is plant and bake sale. Now. <laughs> well, I just have to be happy. Wow. <laughs> 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 it's and swag. Swag. And swag too. So we have these wonderful swag. Um, <laughs> you want to sit down, or you're more comfortable? Oh, I'm, I'm okay. glad to see you. Um, so first of all, I, I bring greetings from the Reading Garden Club. We are so happy to be in town. We have been working to accomplish our mission in town in Reading for 60 years. I don't know if you realize that. We at, at the beginning we did a lot with things like uh, bird watching and things like that, and now we've. Um, We've progressed and um, have included more civic-minded activities. Um, I noticed that some of you have our liaison to different groups in town. Well, luckily, Jane Fiore somehow knew that, and now we have presented each of you with with a Reading Garden Club. This is Bob's <laughs> Reading Garden Club mug. Of course, filled with candy for stressful times. <laughs> although I'm sure you have no stress. <laughs> so we hope that you all feel comfortable in being a liaison with us. Just you know, call me anytime or anyone in the club, and um, I we hope you enjoy your mugs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You much. Well, so our mission. We have three parts to our mission. First of all, it is the first thing is to support community, uh, the community organizations in Reading. Another mission is to educate both community and uh, uh, educate our members. And the third is to beautify Reading. We want, we want everyone to live in a beautiful town. To accomplish the um, support of the community organizations, here's what, here's what we do. First of all, we have um, different committees to accomplish each of these goals. And we have a committee that visited, visits the nursing homes and the artists and, um, and Daniels, and they do activities with, with the um, residents. We support the memory program at the library and do planting activities with those people. Um, we do a, a collection for the food pantry. Some, some months we, we give $200 to the food pantry uh, and food. And we also do a linen drive for the uh, Mission of Deeds. Uh, we are working with the three, uh, the 375th uh, groups of people, uh, the committee, to make the centerpieces for the activities, the three, three activities at Parker Tavern. And we're doing that along with the Crystal Garden Club, which um, is another garden club in town. So, so we support the 375th by doing that. And we also take part in lots of community <coughs> activities, such as Friends and Family Day. We have an activity where the kids come to, the, to our tent and the kids can plant, um, plant uh, usually it's in patients, and take them home and put them in their garden. So, so we're trying to get the community engaged in, all, in so many things. Um, we also educate. We educate the community as well as educating our own members. We do a um, we do some lectures at the library that are open to the public, free of charge. Sometimes we do them on our own, and sometimes we do it with friend, the friends of the Reading Library, which we hope to do a lot more next year. Um, there was one on climate change. I don't know if you recall that a few years ago. Um, this year, one of them was one. The one lecture we did was um, pets in your garden. So what, what's good and not good to plant in your garden if you have pets? Um, we also have this year Louise Morrison, who's 
this year. And I have worked um, with the environmental club at the, at the high school. And we, uh, Louise especially, uh, worked hard on e explaining to the kids uh, sustainability in Reading. You know, if you have a garden, yeah. uh, is it, yeah, uh, how sustainable is it to, to support your family and so on. We, um, we also give a $1,000 scholarship to someone at the high school every year. So, um, so we do lots of things like that with the community, and then we have um, so many things to educate our members. We at our monthly meetings, we have people that do lectures and on um, container gardens, birds in your garden, how to what to plant in order to attract birds, um, so on and so on. We. Um, have a, a monthly newsletter that has lots of hints to use in your garden. And um, we, let's see what else. Oh, we, and we go on outings to very interesting places such as uh, Mount Auburn Cemetery to learn the history of that. So, um, and to beautify Reading. This, I think, is near and dear to many people at Town Hall because we've done the plantings around Town Hall. And there's one section, we're right there where the old library used to be. That is going to be, God willing, and not much rain, I hope. Uh, we're going to have that planted by the, um, the end of May and um, in time for the 375th celebration. So um, we're really looking forward to that. Mike Hannaford is working closely with our committee to, uh, to get that accomplished. And uh, something to tie in with what Jenny mentioned about the cemetery, the war memorial um, on Salem Street, right in front of, um, right across from Town Hall. We, uh, Mike took out the bushes there, and we're going to replant that with um, red, white, and blue flowers to um, and have that done by Memorial Day when they have this, the um, ceremony there. And. Um, so, so it's really important for us to do that. Every now and then we run over to the library and also do some weeding and so on. Um, one of the very favorite places in Reading that we take care of is the Parker Tavern, the, uh, the gardens in front of Parker Tavern, and I'm sure most of you have seen that. Um, it's hard because you, you want to do period, which period of history do you, um, do you uh, reflect in your garden. Is it an herb garden? Is it from the 1800s and so on? So we always have that um, that little dilemma, but it always looks great. And um, we also do, um, we also support the Reading Land Trust, which is, um, a, they conserve land in Reading. They um, use land to, to keep for, um, you know, just to keep his land for us to, to have in Reading, so it's not as, as um, crappy. And then the very last thing that we do to beautify Reading is a collaboration with the town. We have land that belongs to the town of Reading, and we we organize people who who would like to beautify those islands and plots of land in Reading. To um, and we have a little sign. For example, um, I'll just say. Um, I'm try this a bit. Just someone named him. He has a, a site down by the train station. And um, he, he beautifies it with flowers and perennials and so on. And then we have a sign that says his name and what he likes to, he wants to have on the sign. And he takes care of it all, all summer long. And then um, and the town provides the land, we provide the sign, and, and Tim provides the work. And, and so on. So, and then, by the way, if you'd like to do uh, do one of these, there are a few barrels left at the tra at the depot. <laughs> if you'd like to to do one of these yourself, just contact me. So um, that's that's it in a nutshell, real fast little nutshell. And um, if you would like to contact anyone uh, in the garden club, especially me, so I forgot to mention I was the president. I'm Marianne Higgins. Um, we have a website, www.readinggardenclub.org. And um, you can also just Google Reading Garden Club, Reading Mass, because otherwise you might get Reading Pennsylvania or Reading California. Um, and, and that it, it'll come up for you. Um, so, uh, and how do we do all this? How do we get all of this accomplished? Well, we have a very active Ways and Needs Committee that raises money, and um, all the money we raise from public activities has, by our bylaws, has to go right back to the town. 
So we, um, it's great because that's how we, we do so many things. So Jean Stewart is in charge of this sign, the Reading <laughs> Garden Club plant sale on May 18th. So she's going to speak now. Nice. And they're all praying for it, not monsoon rain. We've done this before. I don't quite know how to say this. I'll try over here. Um, the plant sale, actually we start the planning for it in the fall. And there's a whole series of activities and details that we need to take into account. The town is incredibly supportive. We meet with them on a yearly basis to go over what our plan is, what we need from them. They offer us suggestions, and they're incredibly supportive. And the DPW, we've been a phone without the DPW. So shout out to the DPW. Uh, Mike Hannaford, I think you're so tired of hearing from me. <laughs> we do one thing, we make sure that we feed them regularly. One of the things of mantras is we must feed people too. <laughs> so at this point, uh, we're working on the final list of it, actually pass them on to Mahoney's. One of our biggest suppliers is Mahoney's. We use them both for our annuals and for our natives and perennials. They're very responsive to us. They send us absolutely beautiful stuff. Sometimes we don't know it's going to arrive the day of our sale despite what we order because if it doesn't look good enough, they won't send it. So our flowers are phenomenally healthy. Um, so what we do is we work on developing a list of all the annuals we want and focusing this year especially with the 375th colors of purple and white. It's going to be a lot of purple and white in the mix. Um, just plants that would work in shade, in sunshine, in a mixture. We also work on ordering vegetables and herbs and fruits, some fruit. Um, we have hanging baskets. Um, we have the perennials and the native plants we're really focusing on including a lot in what we order um, to help the environment. One of the things that we've been working on, particularly in writing over the past number of years, is including more native plants that, that will sustain the life cycle of the monarch butterfly who will almost mm -hmm. disappear. I notice a lot more in my backyard, so they must be around here. Um, so we're really kind of focusing on trying to get native plants. Um, and native plants is kind of a, a hard concept. The easiest way to understand native plants is native plants are plants that were here before anybody moved to this North American continent. They're plants that just grew naturally. And the importance of native plants is that they sustain the local ecology system, the wildlife. I mean, there are certain plants that bees need if they live in this area or that area. So we're trying to order the right plants for the right place. That's the really important part of native plants. So we are working really heavily on that. We've got all our details done. Um, and as Marianne said, this is our biggest fundraiser of the year. Whatever we get goes right back into town of our projects. And we, as I said before, we are a big hope But it's just not monsoon rain. Of course, we have had plane sales and monsoon rains before. We've all survived, but the plants look better. One of the things we've tried to do this year, particularly with the natives and last year too, is that a lot of times when plants come, it's still May. They're not going to be gloriously in full bloom. And most of the garden people don't want them gloriously in full bloom because it's only May. But so we started putting the tool for the natives and the perennials uh, picture signs up. This is what it's going to look like with information about them. And I think it's been really well received by the public because sometimes when you see that green plant, you don't know what's going to develop this beautiful white plumage or this beautiful red flower. So we're trying to give people more information about that. So we'd like to invite you all to come um, on May 18th. Uh, we'll be there early. Uh, the plants will be there. Fingers crossed by 7 o'clock in the morning. And fingers even more crossed to those two that it won't be green and bitterly cold. And we make it through every year. So if anybody has any questions, we'd be happy to turn to them. Thank you so much for, for coming to speak with us. I go every year. It's wonderful. I have milkweed in my lawn. So, um, so that's um, for those of you watching at home. If you didn't catch that, that's May 18th, correct? Yes, May 18th. It's Wonder. always the Saturday after Mother's Day. Okay. You can't get plants in both with women because ah, there's some good time. I I just like to say I I'm so glad that you come once a year, and uh, you know people are people don't realize that things that are going on and the way the town looks.
has a lot to do with you and your members, and that has been true for decades. And you know, I think it's really important that you have this visit on an annual basis. I love that it comes kind of right as spring is coming, and uh, and I just I think. I think it's great that you're here, and it's great to hear about what you do, and just to remind everybody uh, what a real jewel um, the Garden Club is. And thanks for the bling. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. All right. Um, so next up, we have Memorial Day. I believe we're, we have Kevin here. Thank you. I'll hand it over to Kevin. I have to see what's in here. We're going in for the candy. Uh -huh. Well, uh -huh. uh, <laughs> nice it's health, health food. Pace yourself. All right, well, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. Uh, with two new members on the board, I figured it'd be beneficial to come by and talk a little bit about what we do on Memorial Day, but also a little bit about what we do before Memorial Day. Uh, Memorial Day is on Monday, uh, May 27th. Uh, but much goes in to preparing for Memorial Day before that. Uh, we have 2,252 veterans' graves in Reading's four cemeteries. Uh, for many years, uh, Frank Driscoll, uh, who had this job before me, uh, was the custodian of soldiers, sailors, and graves. Uh, and he did a great job. Unfortunately, Frank passed away two or three days after Memorial Day last year. Uh, right now, Mr. Ray Boyd, who is a Vietnam veteran, uh, Navy CB, uh, I believe is interviewed uh, for the position, has stepped up. Uh, he's a great guy. He's a retired uh, Army Reservist, uh, and he'll do a great job. Uh, Frank's daughter, Caitlin Salmon, uh, who has been very involved and, and probably the brains behind Frank doing such a great job all these years. Uh, but she's going to continue uh, helping us out and donating her time. She'll be out there with us. I just want to say first, I, I started as a veteran service officer uh, four years ago, uh, yesterday. And I got here, and it's three weeks before Veterans Day. And Bob said, "Here's your desk. Here's your computer. Veterans or uh, Memorial Day is in three weeks. Good luck. <laughs> Get, good luck." Uh, so I'm just happy to have more time to uh, to plan this than uh, than I did four years ago. Uh, but preparing for Memorial Day is really a team effort. Uh, Again, Mike Hannaford, who people have talked about, does a super job with his with his crew up at the cemetery, uh, getting the cemeteries ready after after a tough winter. Uh, Kim Hanneslager, uh, right there, right there, uh, she does her GIS magic. Uh, she pulls the the cemetery veterans records, uh, merges them with the cemetery uh, maps, uh, and comes up with these these fancy maps uh, that have every has every veteran's grave uh, listed on it nice. so we begin on Wednesday May 22nd uh, we have all kinds of volunteers that come out uh, budgets uh, come out and help us uh, but we started at Laurel Hill and we actually work behind the cemetery crews as soon as they've cut the grass we're out there putting the markers out and it takes till Friday to get all four cemeteries done. Um, and I, I encourage people, if they haven't been in the cemeteries after they've been decorated, please get out there and look. Um, the cemetery crew does an amazing job. And just to go out and see the two, over 2,000 uh, veterans um, that have served, uh, it, it really looks great. So if you get a chance, go out, uh, take a look, and pay your respects to, to the folks. Uh, the real fun starts on Saturday morning uh, when the geraniums get delivered to each of the four cemeteries. And we probably have between 40 and 50 Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Cub Scouts, uh, town volunteers. Uh, and they are placing the flags and the geraniums at each of the, the veterans' graves. Uh, and that whole process is probably done in about three hours. It's it's chaos, but it's uh, it's fun. So uh, again, I encourage it to get everybody to get out there and pay their respects. Uh, the markers, flags, and geraniums stay out for approximately two weeks. Uh, last year, we recruited uh, 
Boy Scout Troop 702 to actually pick up all the marker flags and geraniums, uh, and they bring them back to the cemetery building up at Laurel Hill. Uh, those geraniums are then available uh, to the residents uh, to pick up uh, beginning on, I think it's June 10th is, will be the date this year. Uh, and as always, donations are, are uh, always welcome. The geraniums are not paid by the town. They are paid for by the, uh, the Veterans Memorial Trust Fund, which was established, I'm not sure how many years ago, but More than 10. Okay. Um, so that more than covers the, uh, the flags or the, the flowers that we put out every year. Uh, we replace approximately 25% of the flags each year that get damaged due to the weather. Uh, and the state covers 75% of the cost um, for those flags every year. Some towns actually replace all their flags, which uh, I feel is a waste. Uh, so after all that's done, we get to Memorial Day, which is on Monday. The uh, parade will start at the Legion, uh, right down on Ash Street at approximately 9 o'clock. Uh, and it's great. Every, every group comes up, all the dance clubs and uh, Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts. So it's a, it's a short parade that comes up Main Street, and we'll, we'll go over to Laurel Hill. Uh, we will have our largest uh, turnout, and again, I've been amazed at, at the way that Reading comes out to support veterans every year, Veterans Day, Memorial Day. Uh, again, Mother Nature plays a big part in, in the turnout, but uh, it's, it's always been very, very well attended, so it's, uh, it's great to see. Uh, this year, we're fortunate to have uh, Redding's own Brigadier General Jack Hammond, uh, who was a 1979 graduate of, uh, of Redding High School. Uh, had a 31-year military career and is now the executive director of Home Base, uh, which is an organization part of, they work with the Red Sox Foundation and Mass General Hospital to provide um, care for the invisible wounds of war mm -hmm. to veteran service members and their families. Uh, and it's a great organization. They do amazing work out there. So we're very happy to have uh, General Hammond. Uh, we also have the Reading Police Department as the honor guard. Uh, we'll have the high school band. Uh, Joe, the director, Joe Mulligan, is always very supportive and does a great job uh, with Memorial Day and, and throughout the year at different ceremonies. Uh, we always welcome somebody from the select board to, uh, to speak at each of the cemeteries. Uh, so I look forward to, to having you join us if you're available. Uh, who else? Um, I haven't heard from Representative Jones or Haggerty yet. Um, they are invited. Unfortunately, Senator Lewis uh, is not able to attend yet. Uh, but hopefully, um, Representative Jones or Haggerty will be able to attend. The uh, Laurel Hill is the, is the biggest ceremony uh, of the day and the most well attended. Uh, once that's done, we do go over to uh, Forest Glen Cemetery, uh, which is this is Veteran Circle at uh, at Forest Glen, uh, where it's it's only veterans uh, who are buried there. Uh, so we'll have the ceremony there at approximately 10:45. We'll move on to Charles Lawn Cemetery at 11:30, and then Wood End Cemetery at 12 noon. Do those times again. That would be great. Uh, Forest Glen at 10:45, Charles Lawn at 11:30, and Wood End at 12 noon. And again, I just I appreciate all the tre tremendous support from all the residents uh, to make this happen. Uh, and I invite everybody out, and I look forward to seeing. You. Thank you, so. Thank you, Kevin. Anybody have any questions? Thank you, Kevin. Um, no, these are the these services um, I've attended several years. Um, they're um, a wonderful way to recognize those who have died in the line of service in our community. They're um, they're powerful. They're inclusive. And my thanks to you for organizing them. Very well. Um, so uh, at this point, traditionally we do have select board members speak at each of the cemeteries. I'm curious if people are going to be available this Memorial Day weekend. Um, I, I think I am. I'm, I've had the opportunity. I don't know that any of the four of you have had that opportunity to speak. So let me defer um, so that you get the opportunity to do that. But I'm happy to do it if we have a, if we have a vacancy. 
I can be available, but I'm going. I was planning on being out of town. I spoke last year, and I know you did as well. Yeah, I have um, to. Unfortunately, I have to be out of town. Okay. Um, six hours away. So okay. It's hard to get back in time. Yes. I am out of town. Um, the question is if I'm going to be back on Monday, and I'm not sure yet. Okay. Let's, let's work on that. Right. Well, I mean, these are spread out enough that we'll we need to be at all of them. Yeah. yeah. Um, so um, I know what I'm going to be doing all morning. <laughs> no, I I am available and certainly willing and interested. Okay. Um, Thanks to you, folks. For all right. Let's um try and coordinate that the rest of that offline then. All right. Great. Um, so moving on, we have the 375th celebration update, and there is a sea of purple in the audience. So welcome. <laughs> Who is our official speaker today? Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Over to Mark. No cash, Okay. Um, hi, everyone, and thank you so much for having Reading 375 here at your select board meeting tonight, Pop. In a little bit more detail, I know you all know that I spoke at town meeting um, very globally about Reading 375. I hope since then you've had an opportunity to check out the website, to um, take one of the flyers. What we wanted was an opportunity to go through all of the events that we have planned for the two-week period to educate you, but largely the public, about everything that's happening during this two-week celebration of our town's 375th anniversary from May 31st to June 15th. Doing that all in 10 minutes is a challenge, but I'm a really fast talker and I brought notes. <laughs> so, that'd be fantastic. Reading375.com. Um, I would not try to take a single note because I really am going to talk fast and when you hear the length of events and the number of them is all on the website. That's really all you need to know is Reading375.com. Every event, the date, the time, the location, the details are on the website. Um, I'm joined tonight by the many members of the Reading 375 Steering Committee. Phil Rushworth is our chair. Um, Katie Robertson, who's in back, has been instrumental in getting this project for more than a year off the ground. Um, Sarah Bricolacchio, right there. I'll be chatting about her when we come to one of our special events in a little bit. She's also on the Steering Committee and has been engaged for over a year. Um, Alan Ace and Amanda Folds were unable to attend tonight, but send their best to the select board and have been, um, they've just been huge in, in organizing and moving forward with a lot of energy. So with that, I'd like to start with the events. Sound good? Okay. Um, Reading 375 kicks off on Friday, May 31st with opening ceremonies. That will be at 7 p.m. here on the Reading Common. There will be a jumbotron on the Reading Common. Yes. <laughs> um, on that huge screen that will be visible from the whole common will be an original brand new video production highlighting his, the history of Reading from the beginning right up to present day. Um, there will be an illumination. The trees on the common will be lit on the 31st and they will stay lit every night for the th two weeks of the celebration so people driving through town will know something special is happening because the trees will be all lit. There will be live music. We have one or two other surprises up our sleeve but I'm not going to reveal them tonight but you definitely want to be there. Um, Following that event on the common, downtown Reading is throwing open its doors. There will be, I believe we decided on purple balloons, yes. probably. Um, there'll be purple balloons outside of restaurants, local businesses, churches, and local organizations that are participating. I can spend the next half an hour going through the list, so I can't mm -hmm. tell you all of them. They will be listed on the website, so you can go to the website and see everyone who's participating. Just to give you a flavor, we have an organization sponsoring a Make Your Own Sunday bar. We have an organization, a local business, sponsoring a wine tasting. Um, and several of our local restaurants are offering discounts and specials for anyone wearing Reading 375 gear. And I do appreciate several of you wearing pins, so thank you for that. Um, so that will all be available on the website. I would like to acknowledge that James Bonazzoli, Paula Perry, and Sheila Mulroy have spearheaded and organized what is a very massive opening ceremony. So um, I'd like to recognize them. And I believe Virginia Adams is here this evening and has been instrumental in putting together that video presentation that will be on the Jumbotron. So we're very grateful for her engagement. 
The next day, Saturday, June 1st, there will be a concert for Reading at the Reading Memorial High School Performing Arts Center at 3 p.m. The tickets for this are free. It is a free event. However, you do need a ticket to, event, to attend. Tickets will be available at our CTV studio on Main Street. This concert features the Reading Community Singers under the leadership of Beth Mosier, the Reading Symphony Orchestra under the direction of George Ogata. Bob Beckman and Marlene Wolf have been huge in organizing all the logistics to make this concert happen, and I'm delighted to say that the producer of this concert is William Enslow. You might know him as the man the Performing Arts Center is named after, mm -hmm. so having him produce a concert for the town is just unbelievable. It's going to be a beautiful afternoon of music and a celebration of our community. Over the two-week period, there will be an event called Paint the Town. Um, I'm delighted to inform the select board and the public that we've had more than 30 original works of art submitted by local artists, each one inspired by the town of Reading. They will be displayed at venues all across town. Again, the venues, the artwork, and the artists will all be listed on the website, so you can see where to go to see it. Um, and there will be a reception for Paint the Town on Wednesday, June 5th at 6 p.m. at the Senior Center. Jane Burns and Eileen Barrett have really spearheaded the promotion and the organization to make Paint the Town happen. Saturday, June 8th, kind of the midpoint of the two weeks. Um, there's a lot going on that day. It starts in the morning at the Reading Public Library um, from 10 to 1. They will be hosting Our Town, Your Story. The way it works is this. You bring it up to three photographs. They could be um, of your home. They could be of your family right now. They could be of history. We have a lot of people in town with long history and have great historic photos of Reading. Whatever you choose. They will scan them into the library's virtual collection and you have the option to um, create a little video where you describe why these photos are important. The idea behind this event is to create a legacy for this moment in Reading's history so that when there's the 400th and 405th anniversary celebration, they can look back to us and see our photos and our stories and our families and what Reading looked like in 2019. Um, it's a wonderful event and we're very grateful to Amy Lannon, um, the library director and all the staff at the library who have organized that. One of our signature events also happens on June 8th. It's Porch Fest. This exists at communities all surrounding us. We've never done it in Reading. We're doing it for the first time this year. There will be live music um, playing on front yards, driveways, and porches all over Reading. Um, I'm delighted to share that more than 30 bands have already signed up. So as you walk around Reading that afternoon, you're just going to hear bluegrass, punk, classic rock. Um, we have banjos. It's, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be fantastic. Um, and that's completely free to the public. Alan, Ace, and Amanda, who couldn't be here tonight, the Folds, um, really made that happen. They in, worked with other communities to find out how they make it work, and they, they brought it here, and they've had a tremendous response. Also on that weekend, if you're interested in really diving down into the history of writing, you're going to want to spend some time at the Parker Tavern. On Friday and 7th in the evening, there's an event called Tavern at the Tavern. There will be period music and period libations. I think of it as sort of partying like they did hundreds of years ago <laughs> um, in the oldest building in our community that dates back to the 1600s. Um, on Saturday, June 8th, you can go to Washington Park and actually witness a vintage baseball game. My understanding is the teams will be wearing the uniforms and using the equipment that they would have used in the 1800s. It's an opportunity to see baseball the way it looked over 100 years ago. Um, so that'll be great. If at that event you're feeling like you need a refreshment, you can head over to Parker Tavern, where they will be hosting Clubhouse at the Tavern and offering baseball-themed refreshments. <laughs> That night, Parker Tavern throws open its doors again for the final event of the weekend, Revelry at the Tavern. There will be cocktails, music, and entertainment in our town's oldest building. Um, we want to recognize <coughs> Stephanie Johnson, Kathy Crook, Diane Wilson. I don't think any of them are here tonight. Oh, oh Stephanie's here. Stephanie, I'm so glad you made it. <laughs> um, you've done, just done an enormous amount. That's a lot of logistics to work out, and you guys have worked tirelessly to create what will be a very special weekend at Parker Tavern for the whole community. Um, and all the friends of Parker Tavern, obviously. On Monday, June 10th, will be Charter Day. That's the official birthday of Reading. We're still working on details on that. There's only one thing we know for sure, cake. There will be birthday cake <laughs> for Reading on Monday, June 10th. Yeah. Details to be determined on the website. 
On Wednesday, June 12th, we have our sort of a, a signature culinary event. We're delighted that the Reading Rotary has moved their annual Taste of Metro North, which I'm sure a lot of you have attended in the past. It's a fun event. You buy a ticket, you go into the field house at the high school, and there are tons and tons of our local restaurants giving away samples of their food. Um, so you can really make a night of it. It's a fabulous event. Um, the Reading Rotary always hosts this later in the year. Um, but they specifically moved it to this date to be part of Reading 375. Tim Kelly is with us tonight representing the Reading Rotary. Um, so we're delighted to have their <coughs> partnership. On Saturday, June 15th, it's the grand finale. So this is the end of the two-week period. We have events from morning till night. It starts with the Kids Fun Run, which is the Friends of Reading Rec annual fun run at the high school track in the morning. Um, it's followed by Friends and Family Day, the Reading Lions Club Friends and Family Day event at the Birch Meadow Fields from 10.30 to 3 o'clock. I'm sure this is another event that you all go to every year. My understanding from the Lions that we've worked, the Lions Club, they get year over year bigger attendance and they are anticipating this being the biggest year yet. There will be food, games, giveaways, entertainment. I can tell you from personal experience, you can go for the full hours and not see, the full four hours and not see all of it. It's just a wonderful event. Um, and we've been working with Sharon Thomas, Lorraine Berry, Joanna Crowley, and Joe Thomas have been our liaisons from the Lions Club, and I'm delighted that Joe was able to join us tonight to represent the Lions Club. I love that you found something purple and Lions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like hitting every button. Um, also, if during this event you found yourself thinking, I would love to see Reading from the bird's eye view, I'm delighted to tell you that we will have hot air balloon rides. Um, courtesy of Remax Encore, and Karen Herrick is here tonight wearing her t-shirt, and she's been instrumental in getting that brought as part of this. Uh, I do have to say it's weather permitting, but weather, weather permitting, you can get up in a hot air balloon ride and take a little tethered ride up above the skyline and get a different view of Reading. Um, so we're really excited about that. At 2.30 that day, at the wood end, when you're done with all of that, <laughs> head over to wood end and bring your dog. We're having the first ever Reading 375 dog parade. Um, it's the biggest gathering of canines in Reading's history. Um, it's a wonderful way to celebrate what for a lot of us is one of the most important parts of our family that sometimes get overlooked, but not this year. We're going to make sure that our dogs are highlighted and have an event just for them. Um, I'd like to thank Marcel Dubois. <laughs> Marcel Dubois, I'm sorry, who's here tonight. I, I'm talking too fast now. Um, you can pause for a second. <laughs> Take a breath, Jean. <laughs> Marcel um, organized the dog parade. And again, the logistics around that are not simple. That's a lot of work to make that happen. This is an event that requires registration, so you gotta go to reading375.com to register your dog to participate. Um, late that afternoon, there will be a concert back at Birch Meadow featuring the Reading Community Concert Band, the North Shoreman Barbershop Chorus as well. Again, we're concerned about food. We, we always wanna make sure you're eating. So if, as you're contemplating that music, you find yourself hungry, there will be a food truck event with all variety of food trucks, everything from savory to sweet. Um, Kathy Spur organized all of that and made it happen for us. And the celebration will end the way only any celebration should end with fireworks, mm -hmm. courtesy of the Friends of Reading Recreation and Peter Commodorus um, and his whole crew. So we're very grateful to them for providing the fireworks that will end the two-week celebration. I would like to highlight three events that are happening throughout the two weeks. So those were all sort of happening on certain days. Um, if this house could talk will happen over the two-week period. How this works is the idea behind it is every one of our homes and businesses has something special about it. It doesn't have to be historically significant. It doesn't have to be a famous person slept or lived here. It can be what's special about your home to you, um, why you moved there, a renovation that you did, anything about, I mean, people who've lived there, the people who lived there before you. Um, we provide a custom sign. You type up three or four sentences. That's it. Just this little tidbit about your house. On May 31st, you put the lawn sign in your lawn. It stays there for the two week, two week period. And that way, as people are enjoying Porch Fest and enjoying Art Walk and enjoying all the activities, they're gonna see these signs and pause and read the little thing about that building. Um, it's a way to share our stories and to celebrate our stories and what makes our home special. Um, I'm delighted that more than 50 homes and business have already signed up, but we have more signs available. And this is something anyone could do. It's a fairly easy way to participate. Um, Sarah Bricolacchio and Diane Wilson um, spearheaded and made this happen. And I think you were inspired by other communities this is something that happens in other towns and you thought you'd bring it to Reading. It's fantastic. 
We have a brand new book published by local authors that celebrates the history of Reading. Images of America Reading is by local authors Ginny and Everett Blodgett, who are here this evening. Um, it's a one-of-a-kind book, a beautiful gift for anyone who cares about this town. Um, it is on sale beginning Monday. Monday, and you can come meet the authors and get your own copy on the very first day it's available to the public on Monday, May 13th at RCTV Studios, where they're having a kickoff event. Um, all the details are on the website. Last one. So, during the two week period, if you are a little bit competitive and you want to have a little fun, there is going to be an app based scavenger hunt, a Reading 375 app based scavenger hunt. You download the app for free. The game opens up on the 31st. You can't cheat and like get the hints ahead of time. You gotta wait till the 31st. The game begins um, and you begin to participate. There are challenges and activities that you do, a lot of them centered around Reading 375 activities. Um, and you earn points. For the more challenges you do, the more points you earn um, over the two week period. This is sponsored by the Reading Cooperative Bank and Crystal Hodson has been their representative who's really done all the work on the technology and the app to make sure it's ready to go. It's gonna be a really fun way to enjoy the festivities they're also providing $1,500 in prizes. Mm. So there will be a prize for first, second, and third place, but also prizes for categories like best demonstration of Reading Pride and best family photo um, and best in show dog photo. So <laughs> they really, it is, it's going to be a lot of fun. So I encourage you to download the app and play the game. Um, I did want to mention that Laura Wilson, a local resident, has just signed on to our team to vol manage our volunteers more than, well, more than 100, almost 200 folks. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 folks in Reading have signed on to the website to be volunteers during the two-week period. <coughs> Obviously, someone needs to corral that energy and that talent. Uh, Laura signed up to do that, so we're grateful to her. Is there anyone in the room, I'm worried I missed somebody, from Reading 375, can we get everybody? A ton of the folks who I mentioned wanted to be here, just couldn't, so they, they send their best. Um, so I hope you can appreciate the enormous amount of work and the enormous number of individuals who are involved in making this happen for our town. Um, I do have a request. At this point, we would really love your support. The select board, as the highest elected board in this community, you have um, big voices. Um, so to the extent that you can email everyone you know in Reading, wear your buttons around town, wear your t-shirts around town, email the folks you know in the community with a link to the website. I'm looking forward to our town's anniversary celebration. The details are here. It can be two sentences long. Um, but just spread the word in that way. We're doing a lot on social media. If you just took a picture of yourself and posted it and said looking forward to our anniversary celebration with a link to the website, that'd be great. Most importantly, we want you at these events. We hope that you'll join us um, to celebrate our town's history, what a beautiful place it is to live, how excited we are about the future. Um, and when you do, again, post to social media <laughs> and hashtag Reading 375. I didn't do she 10 minutes. Me <laughs> good. <laughs> Did I get anything wrong? Jane, thank you so much thank for that, that wonderful presentation. And I want to thank all the volunteers here and at home. This is a massive undertaking. It's going to be an amazing series of events. I'm really looking forward to it. My kids know about it. So thank you all so much for all you're doing to help make this fabulous. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So why don't we take just a five-minute break, Bob, before okay. we jump into the next agenda item. Yep. All right.
Uh, okay, Bob, I'm going to hand it over to you for the MWRA. Okay, thanks. We're going to have to defer that to your next meeting. There's a legal requirement when town meeting ends, and we're, we went a little too long to get uh, that tonight. Okay, great. So we aren't doing... Um, so you won't be doing the MWRA. You will be doing it next week. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, next meeting on the 21st. All right. Uh, so the next agenda item is uh, we are being asked to approve the notice of intent for, is it Mallet? Is that, is it Mallet or Mallet? Yes. Mallet. Mallet. Oh, uh, so you could option number three. All right. Um, Mallet. Uh, and this is, this means that we as the owners of the land are allowing the review process to begin with the conservation committee. Um, so. Bob, is there beyond the motion? Is there any explanation? No, this, this folks here, including Kim, that can certainly answer any questions. But this is the start of what is meant to be a public process. Okay. Um, you have to formally uh, approve this NOI in order for the advertising to begin, if you will. Is it end in a transfer? I don't believe so. Just it, what's the end result? It's not a <coughs> transfer. No, no, the, the, that's a completely different issue that we hope you'll take up at a later time. Um, this is the Trails Committee applying to the Conservation Commission to have a public hearing to discuss whether this trail project should go forward and under what conditions, basically what wetlands conditions. Um, we need the signature of the property owner and since the select board controls one of the three parcels that the trail that are involved with this trail building project, we need to you. The other two parcels are controlled by the Conservation Commission but they typically would decide an application to themselves. So they deferred to Bob, who then deferred to you, since you control, as I said, one of the three parcels. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, so Mark, as the Secretary, could I ask you to read the first motion? Move to approve the filing of a notice of intent for the Trails Committee to be sent to the Mass Department of Environmental Protection and the Reading Conservation Commission concerning proposed work in the Mallette Conservation Area. This uh, notice of intent requires a public hearing and notification of abutters within 300 feet. Any further discussion? All those I, second. Second. I, just, uh, I just had one, one, one question. Um, I thought we previously handed over uh, control of this property to the Conservation Commission. That's so. true, but this is a, a project as a whole that's come under some scrutiny by the select board and by the, by the abutters. Uh, and this just seemed the clean way of doing it. We didn't want to presume too much. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of this process, if we would just make sure that we know who's going to sign this, yes. uh, preferably tomorrow or uh, by midday on, on Thursday. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, with, with Thank the board's permission, um, oh I'd be happy to sign this on your behalf. You have our stamps anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Not all of them. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, great. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Great. Okay, thank you. Um, so, Bob, do, all you, set. do you have sufficient signatures for this? Okay, thank great. you. So, uh, next up, we have a presentation from the RMLG General Manager, Colleen O'Brien. Um, so there will be no vote for this. Um, if there are topics of interest that come up that we want to explore further, we can discuss adding them to a future agenda. So I will hand it over to Colleen. So we're just listening. We're just listening. Setting expectations. Is this the, uh, this one? It's okay. It doesn't can hear. Okay. Thanks for having us. Uh, good evening. Um, I was asked by the RMLD liaison to provide an RMLD overview. Um, the slide deck which Bob can send you uh, contains much information for your reference. Um, to keep the presentation within our allotted time frame though, um, my senior management team uh, will kind of touch just on the highlights of each of the slides but then Bob sends it to you, you can uh, look at the rest for, uh, for reference. I'd also like to just take a second to let you know that while we are not 375 years old, we are 125 years old this year. So May, May 21st is our anniversary, and we'll be posting uh, a historical short video that Joyce has put together. And then in October 10th, as part of the National Public Power Week, when we have our open house, we'll probably have a small reception after the open house that everyone will be invited to, uh, and probably have a board meeting that, that night as well. So we look forward to that, and, um, and I, I, we'll, we'll coordinate with maybe even trying to do something with uh, with the 375. So uh, with that, I'd like to introduce uh, uh, some of my management team that's here. Um, Integrated Resources Director Chuck Underhill. 
the back, Business Finance and Utility Technology Director Wendy Markowitz, Assistant Utility Technology Director Ronnie Holzer, and Director of Engineering and Operations Hamid Jafari. So I'm going to take control of the, uh, the space station here, and Chuck's up next. Hopefully moving a chair doesn't violate protocols. I think you're okay. Can look that way. I can do that. So as Colleen said, I'm the Integrated Resources Director. I have been with RMLD for the last six months. Uh, an extremely long tenure. <laughs> Prior to that, uh, I spent 10 years with Danvers Electric. Uh, learning how municipal utilities in Massachusetts work, and 25 years uh, prior to that, uh, I worked for uh, the Vermont Municipal Utilities. So, uh, I'm kind of here to explain what it is the Energy Resources Division does. Uh, we manage the uh, power supply portfolio. We are uh, the liaison with ISO New England, which is the uh, wholesale market in the Northeast. Uh, in New England. Um, so I manage uh, the market, I manage our contract resources, and I handle our forecasting and budgeting processes. I'm also responsible for the design of retail rates, and as a subset of that, uh, I'm responsible for working with key accounts and customer service, and also working on load management activities, which includes energy efficiency So I was asked uh, to define a kilowatt hour. And I'm not sure exactly what context to, to put that in, so I came up with a car analogy. And uh, basically a kilowatt is 1,000 watts. That should clarify everything for everyone. Uh, absent that, it's 0 .001 megawatts. Megawatts are the units that we deal with uh, in the wholesale market. Um, but if you're driving a car, it's equivalent to miles per hour. So as you're going down the road, you will drive at various speeds uh, over time. And a kilowatt hour is, from beginning to end of the journey, the amount of distance that you've traveled or the amount of energy that you've actually used. So a kilowatt hour costs roughly 15 cents. It'll power a 60 watt incandescent bulb for 16 and a half hours, or, and because I know you've all already switched, uh, it will power a 13 watt LED bulb, the equivalent of a 60 watt bulb, for 77 hours. You decide the value. Um, <laughs> below that is a chart that kind of breaks down the typical residential uh, usage, excluding uh, electric heat. This is uh, our resource portfolio. Um, it Could contains. you just go back to that previous slide for one second? Sure. Thanks. Oh, I'm good. I just okay. wanted to, I, I, it wasn't able to read the slide. Go okay. Ahead. Never mind. Um, so uh, this is our resource portfolio for the 12 months uh, ending uh, June 30th, 2018. And this has a breakdown of all of our resources in it. Um, we have a a couple of nuclear contracts, which are non-carbon emitting. Uh, we have uh, solar projects that are actually on our system. We have hydro projects uh, that we have included, and we have some wind projects that we, we've got there. So this is sort of our non-carbon footprint right here, uh, and it's growing. The yellow section is what we buy in the open market. We try and keep that between uh, 5 and 20 percent, depending on uh, pricing we can lock in and our risk portfolio. Uh, the rest is bilateral contracts. And this is almost the same chart. I had trouble lining them up because uh, we now work on a calendar year. But what this chart shows is each month how much each of our contract resources contributes uh, to our portfolio. And it changes over time. Uh, one of the easiest ones to see is hydro. And you can see that we've got a moderate amount in January. Springtime usage is very high. Summertime usage, there's no rain, there's no waterfall, so hydro is down. And we can tell a story about virtually all of the contracts that we have. Next, please. So <clears throat> the biggest 
effort that we put forth is in managing our customer facing programs, energy efficiency, electrification, and distributed generation. Uh, distributed generation, we have uh, two uh, power purchase agreements with solar farms, solar collectives uh, here in RMLD. Uh, it is where retail customers get to uh, participate in the program. I'm not sure how many of you uh, participate. Okay. Uh, so we have those. Those are directly connected to the grid. They're about four and a half megawatts. We have uh, our peak management programs. They're all under the shred, the peak umbrella. We have a battery energy storage system, uh, five megawatts. That will be coming on uh, right around the 1st of June this year. Uh, we have a natural gas generator that's been online for about a year and a half now. Uh, that's another two and a half megawatts. And then we have uh, residential and commercial Shred the Peak programs where we call out alerts uh, when it's going to be a peak event and customers uh, do what they can to uh, conserve against the peak. We offer residential and commercial audits and rebates. Uh, we have an online product store. I don't know if any of you have uh, purchased anything from uh, EFI. Uh, we are updating the offerings there. And we've started an electrification program. Uh, for the last uh, five or six years, RMLD has seen a decline in its retail sales. And the electrification program accomplishes two things. One, uh, it grows load. And two, it grows the load using non-carbon resources. So if our EV program takes gas-powered vehicle off the road and puts an electric vehicle on, we also buy non-carbon generation to fuel the recharging of the electric vehicle, at least in our territory. Can't guarantee if somebody takes it out. So uh, that's kind of what we're doing on the retail side. Colleen? We are uh, engaging in a uh, EV program of study uh, to figure out what we want to do next with the program. Uh, we have a number of options for developing uh, charging infrastructure uh, out in the community, um, residential, commercial, uh, and we're making sure that we cover all four RMLD communities. Uh, we have committed to non-carbon uh, resource uh, offset acquisition, so if we build load, we're getting non-carbon resources. We're currently working with the legislature uh, on an acceptable program for us to mirror the renewable portfolio standard commitments of the IOUs. Um, we're developing our EV customer base. Uh, we've got a big campaign going, which we're trying to get uh, pulled into place for the summer. Uh, we have off-peak load management, uh, which includes time of use rates and uh, credits for uh, charging off peak with your electric vehicle and we're tracking EV technology developments. It's another rapidly escalating uh, product out there. So uh, we're going to start working with planning and zoning co uh, commissions on uh, EV charging stations and uh, putting uh, regulations in place where over five units in a residential complex would require the installation of EV charging. Uh, we're looking at funding grants uh, through mass grants, uh, REGI and VW funding. REGI and VW funding, uh, if we can pull it off, would be a coordinated activity with green communities. So uh, we have rebate programs. Uh, we're monitoring and tracking what's going on so that we can continue to uh, upgrade our program. Uh, we will then s establish growth uh, goals for the programs and KPIs, key performance indicators, to be able to measure those. And we're integrating our programs into the forecast of the budget. So um, this next slide is uh, challenging to look at, uh, but I don't want you to read the individual lines. This is a uh, residential uh, electric bill. Um, it has three sections on it. Last month's uh, activity, the current bill, and then uh, the summary. So if you look, um, you, you'll see that uh, the, the bill amount was $59.85. The customer paid uh, $55 and got the $4 prompt payment discount. So the balance owed is zero. Uh, coming here to current charges, we broke this apart uh, a couple of years ago because people were calling in comparing uh, what was going on on a national grid bill and how that was uh, broken out with our one line that says, hi, pay us this amount. 
And so it's broken out. There are essentially two sections on the bill. Uh, this piece relates to the charges for RMLD services, our poles and wires portion of the business, accounting, billing, uh, and miscellaneous administrative. And then we have the market charges identified so people can see uh, what the market power actually costs them. Uh, and then this last section here is simply the amount uh, that's going to be due this month. And this will then appear up here on the next month uh, with or without the credit, depending on if they made the part payment. So, um, that's me. I'm done. <laughs> so, Chuck, when is this test? Excuse me, before you go, Chuck, can I ask you a couple of quick questions? A couple of quick questions. Um, on that very first graph, um, how much of the purchasing is non carbon emitting at this point? Is it about a quarter? And just about a quarter. We, it was probably about 22%. We just signed an agreement. The power started flowing um, April 1st uh, for 3% of our load. So we're at 25% non carbon emitting resources. Great. Um, you talked about some of the programs for electric vehicles. Um, is there any discussion about an opportunity for town vehicles at some point? Yes. We, we have just put uh, our new um, rebate program uh, in place. We presented it to the, the commission this evening. And town vehicles are included. Town vehicles are covered under a couple of categories. One is if the town has a vehicle and simply wants to charge it over at either the uh, DPW or town hall uh, from a charger. The other would be a fleet. And the fleets that we're looking at in the communities include school buses and uh, whatever else is out there. The SUVs that uh, a lot of departments need uh, come as plug-in hybrids rather than all electrics, but we continue to uh, watch the market on that. Great. And last question, with all of the new economic development going on around town, all the new construction, um, do you guys have a program to approach them to get charging stations? Into those uh, buildings? We don't quite yet. We're getting the program up and running. As I said, we're going to planning and zoning to work with them on new construction projects for uh, making sure that that's just an integral part of what goes on. There are a couple of housing projects that we've been working with, one across from the train station. Uh, we're talking with them about putting EV charging stations into their parking area. And there is a residential development, the name of which escapes me uh, at the moment, uh, that we're talking about uh, at least running 240 volt uh, power to the garage so that they can take tier two chargers. Great, thank you. Uh, are we gonna, because there's, I, this spawned a million questions for me. We're gonna invite them back. So is that the plan? I thought we were here to listen tonight. Yeah, we, we are here to listen. Um, I think, you know, at the end of the night, we have our list of potential future agenda items. I think there's a lot of potential here. Yeah, I so agree. I, mm -hmm. I would, yeah. Short yes. Good. All right. Can I Thank just, you, Chuck. Can I add one thing to that? This, um, so currently there's a residential commercial EV rebate program that's online and actually Chuck and I just finished today updating the commercial one to add a couple of more different cases that we're working on. So those will be up on the website tomorrow. The rest of the things that we have here in this study program is due be probably before the summer, at the beginning of the summer, uh, working with the state grants. I mean, there's, there's a lot to it. It's very comprehensive. That's why we, we have the, you know, the simple charging cases are already on the rebate program on the website. But the rest of it, creating a foundation for, you know, coming in and talking to the town about, you know, here's how a fleet thing would work because it would be the same for us. Here's what the state is willing to help us with. We have to meet with the state. So we, we've, we've got a lot of work to do, and we're hoping to get at least the basis of it done before the summer. And then we'll be ready to, to talk about specifics. Okay. Will you be able to send this presentation to us? Yeah, I have it. Yeah, I, Bob's going to send it over. Okay, good evening. Um, again, I'm Wendy Markowitz, and I am the Director of the Business Finance and the Utility Technology Division. Um, under my direction, it is um, the responsibility of the accountants to deliver um, accurate financial statements that are independently audited by Melanson and Heath at this current time, and also regulated by the Department of Public Utilities. Also under my direction, uh, the technology side is uh, responsible for the implementation and the maintenance of the software and the hardware for the entire department. We're also responsible for data analysis through our SQL reporting, 
and uh, we provide a bridge between operations and IT through our operational technology individuals. And then of course we create and deliver the RMLD to that the RMLD customers with the bills. So there's been some questions about how uh, the cash is controlled at the RMLD. So I just wanted to clarify that the RMLD uh, provides the town of Reading um, accounting department all the detail regarding each accounts payable check and payroll check. The RMLD does not have check writing capabilities at all. That all happens at the town of Reading level. Uh, we also do not have any cash capabilities at a high level. Um, all the wires that go out to our power suppliers and all the wires coming in from our customers are done through the town of Reading. We communicate with them, they communicate with us, and uh, that's basically how it happens, and we just record it on each other's end, and we reconcile at the end of the day. All the investments for the RMLD are also done through the town of Reading. And um, the town of Reading has, again, the viewing capabilities of all transactions that we do have, the, the small transactions, $3,500 balance of uh, petty cash, and a $7,500 limit of P-card transactions, which is the purchasing card with the town of Reading. We have to follow the town of Reading policies uh, for those. And the uh, counter cash payments that do come in through our customers, on average, is about $1,000 a day. And we also communicate that through uh, what's called a cash turnover worksheet. Uh, a couple times a week. Okay, so the financial reporting obligations outside of the independent audit that we um, we go through annually. We also, like I said, are regulated by the Department of Public Utilities. We have to um, provide an annual return for them. We also report to the ISO, the ISO, which is our power supplier, the Citizens Advisory Board. Uh, quarterly financials. We report to the Reading Municipal Light Board um, monthly and we also present annual capital and operating budgets. And also we biannually go through a uh, standard and poor's uh, financial study to see what our rating is along with the town of Red. So I thought it was important, there's been some questions over our board meetings, I thought it was important for you to, it's hard to read right now, but if you actually look at it later, you get an understanding of the flow chart of what it actually takes for an invoice to come in the door and get out with a paycheck to the vendor, and, um, and how many levels of approval that it actually goes through. And the invoices, like I said, every invoice is copied and sent to the town of Reading. So the town of Reading has complete viewing capability um, before they cut that check to make sure there's no fraudulent activity happening. Okay, so then um, I also want to talk about the payroll. The payroll, same thing. It's a very intricate um, process. It's, um, there are different, different divisions within the department that some of them work on a work order basis, some of us are office um, individuals, so we record our time differently. So there are three different ways of recording time. Again, we reconcile that, the accounting department reconciles that through the, um, the uh, payroll system with the timesheets. Timesheets are thoroughly checked by the supervisor, then by the division manager, and um, once again, the warrant is developed after a signature from the general manager, the board of commissioners. Everything comes through the town already. So I just wanted to clarify that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. You saved the best for last. Yeah. Uh, oh, I mean, <laughs> and the most humble. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, uh, good evening. Uh, I'm Hamid Jafari, Director of Engineering and Operations, and uh, I'm responsible for keeping lights on, basically. So if you see me doing the storms, we're running with like a chicken with his head cut off, that's me, you know. So trying to keep the light on. So, okay, as you know, uh, we are the largest municipal utility in the state. We're covering four towns, Wilmington, North Reading, Reading, and half the Linfield. We have uh, transmission, sub-transmission, and distribution facilities, as well as we have distributed gen uh, ge generation, two and a half megawatts at uh, in, uh, North Reading at substation three. Uh, uh, I'm in charge of basically electric system reliability standards and the regulatory compliances. These are the compliances, the regulatory compliances that we have to fall under. I'm responsible for all of these groups, engineering, line, meter, substation, facilities, purchasing, and insurance and liability. So I pretty much covered a lot. This is the a new orange management system that we installed last year and also this year we are testing it. So we get the GIS data and we combine that, bring that uh, into the OMS, orange management system. What you see over here is the dashboard and what you see on the left is basically the entire system operation live that our operators basically they get all, they collect all the data information from the outages. 
So when you have an outage, we know exactly where it is and how what what happened and where it is before we get the first call. So we are very well aware of that. So this is what you you don't see that this is inside operation inside the control room that makes us to you know restore the outages faster and you know, have, it, have a better uh, efficiency. Through the meter. <coughs> what is it? Through the meter. Through the meters, right? So the next uh, the next slide is going to show you. This is basically integrating the outage management system with the IBR and AMI. What happens when your meter is out? That meter is reported to the outage management system, and in the outage management system, we're going to have to we're going to see these the red dots or maybe uh, you know shows that you know basically a meter is out. And when there is an area outage, you're going to see that map basically in on the uh, on your app. And what happens is AMI is extending the signal to OMS. OMS is going to in integrate that data with the IVR. IVR is an interactive voice response, meaning the customers can you know, be notified via phone, text, or email about the status of the outage and wh what the estimated restoration time would be. And this is going to help us to uh, restore the outages faster and have a lower, lower operational cost, basically. Because when you know where the outage is, you can dispatch the crew faster, right? And yeah, sending trucks all over trying to find the faults on the system. The next one, please. Um, campaign. And also, we're going to have a campaign uh, to collect the information from the customers, uh, basically two months ahead of the implementation, which the implementation of that full implementation is going to be somewhere in fall, probably late fall, but early fall, we're going to start the campaign of collecting that information from the customers. Will you do that through the bills? Uh, we're going to do that from number of so on the website. We're going to uh, send the, uh, the emails. We got about 19,020 emails in, in the system. As well as I believe we're going to do maybe to the bills also. We still have. I'm just wondering how you're going to capture them. That's yeah. It. We try to reach out as many people. Also, Twitter. Well, many people they have mm. you know, signed up with the Twitter. So we're going to have to call a communication manager uh, and plus Chuck is responsible for that. They're going to be starting the campaign, reaching out to uh, as many people as we can in order to get that. It's just a matter of time. The people could go on the website and also register also these options. Whatever you want, all three of them, you can give all three of them. So that system is being tested right now as we speak. So we're in testing phase. This is the outage ma management. Could you go to the next one? This is very complicated. The background, this is how the systems are integrated, basically. The customer outage portal that you're going to see on your uh, mobile phone, uh, cell phone, that would be it. Or if you have a, uh, uh, if you have a computer. Uh, that you know you could get uh, get that map there what you see the polygon shape that shows the area outage and inside it's going to tell you about the estimated restoration time uh, as well as what happened where the area of you know basic the area it's not going to show individual houses are here there, just in general this is saying that you know you get from national grid uh, the people that you know the national grid or ever source except this one has a little bit more uh, information on it that you know, we, we control. <laughs> uh, so the next one is the RMLD OSHA compliances. You know that you know uh, RMLD actually started compliance standards back in 2013 regarding the exemption because we fall, we, we fall under the uh, OSHA uh, as of February 1st, 2019. All the utilities are ordered uh, to comply with the OSHA rules. Uh, and regulations. So, but we started this uh, back in 2013, and uh, we did a study in um, September of 2018 to find the deficiencies. We found the minor deficiencies. We came up with a, a mitigation plan, and also we set up the OSHA compliance committee in order to enforce the policies and operational procedures, as well as making sure those deficiencies are taken care of uh, over time. They're very, very minor. Like 95 percent, we. Were right on the target, 5% minor stuff that you know we needed to do in order to be compliant. And now, new Wilmington substation. 
Uh, Wilmington is served, uh, most majority of Wilmington area is served by Station 5, which is antiquated uh, substation, and that substation is reaching the end of the useful life. So we're searching for land in Ballotville area, Route 125, 93, you know, in that intersection. So we have uh, uh, targeted a uh, parcel that is right next to National Grid 115 KB line because it's uh, because of the distance, the shorter it is, better, you know, uh, it would cost less to build it. The, the cost of the substation is going to is, is nine, nine, nine and a half million dollars, and the substation is planned to go online by 2021. And uh, this substation also provides some relief from North Reading and Reading substation. So, one wants that substation goes on, we're going to be all set for another 50, 60. I won't be here, but. <laughs> So the new site, the, this is the site, the existing substation and the Wildwood area in Wilmington and the proposed site is, this is Route 105 and this is 93, so it would be right in, uh, close to Andover Street, uh, across the street is Battlefield. Uh, NERC compliance, uh, NERC stands for North American uh, Electric Reliability Corporation. This is basically mandated by federal, all the utilities, they're supposed to follow the, their standards, their, Basically, there are three major standards or uh, uh, compliance areas that they need to follow. One is physical security, cyber security, and also their reliability standards. Very stringent standards to make sure the utilities, they do what they, they should in order to maintain the system so they don't have prolonged outages for the areas and for the customers. Um, we had a NERC audit back in 2018. We passed it without any uh, citation, without any problems. You know, the utility passed because we had all the records, all the maintenance records, training, and also inspections that we had done. They were right on, on target. So, and they were very impressed with the way that you know we're doing things. Uh, so. Uh, kudos to my team. My team they really did a great job on that. The whole thing you know, of the arm and the team. Uh, these are the list of the maintenance uh, programs that you know we uh, we have established in order to make sure uh, we maintain the assets, arm and the assets, as well as you know key maintaining the reliability as best as it, it can be. So uh, I'm not, not going to go through them. There are a ton of them, you know, and we're getting uh, you know the, uh, we, we, uh, every year we present a six-year budget uh, for capital authorizations, and then once the board approves that, then we get uh, to do all of them uh, in pieces. You know, some of them, they take 10 to 15 years to come go through the complete cycle, but it's a cyclic program that goes, some goes three years, some goes five years, some 15, and some, you know, 20 years, depending on what category, like the underground developments or so. <coughs> The last one is the BESS projects. This is basically the uh, battery storage project that we got a grant for $1 million from the state of Mass in June, uh, in, in, in last year. And it is expected to go online by June of 2019. Basically, it's a cost saving method. It's, it's shredding the peak. It stores the energy during the uh, low cost period, and then it's gonna release the energy to the system during the high, uh, during the peak hours. And uh, which is going to be cost saving for, for the customers. We are also are going to help in reducing the carbon footprint, which is a good thing to do. So we're really excited about that. It's five megawatts, and then uh, it's supposed to go on, like right now, about 75% uh, it's completed. So by the end of the month, we're going to have uh, everything completed, and it's going to be ready for June if we have a system peak like what we had two years ago in June, June 13th. Uh, this is a picture that shows basically, you see over here, that's a generator that I was talking about, two and a half megawatts at station three. And these are, this is the construction of those battery cells and transformers and everything that goes back to the station bus. So the whole system would benefit from that. Well, that concludes my uh, presentation. If you have any questions, by all means. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming in. This was very informative. Yeah. Bob, can we put that presentation under today's calendar entry so that if people are looking sure. for it, they can find it? That yeah. was very informative. Great. So. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Thank can you. I, so, Bob. 
Up next, we have the continued hearing for the new poll at Franklin oh, and Grove. Yeah. Oh, there you are. But uh, but I know you have an update on that. We technically have to open well, and then. And we've had some citizen, you know, right. disgruntled citizens around this particular thing. I thought they were sticking around for that. No. No, it's Bob has an answer. Who wanted to run? What was that? Who wanted to run Casher? No. no, 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 that's fine. Bob, Bob's got it covered. Um, yeah, the, the, so technically at 8 o'clock tonight, your hearing was opened, was reopened, was continued. Um, our engineering, you've seen some correspondence. Our engineering department has worked with our MLD, and there's no disagreement now between the two, so that we're not looking for you to resolve the situation. So you can close the hearing. There's a motion to close it and a motion uh, to record the reason why. Um, one of the residents that did, uh, Fred did email and actually visited and was very, very satisfied with the results he got from them. I don't know what the final decision they've made on what to do. I'm not sure if they've made it yet. Um, but it was down to one of two things, and Fred was okay with either one um, from an email. But it me. wasn't the original proposal. Because the um, original proposal seemed no, it was a it was a version not a good not a good way to solve the problem. Well, it was a version of that. Um, what they showed our engineers, which they hadn't before, was all the economics and the engineering behind why they had to do what they had to do, as opposed to us trying to guess why. Um, they did uh, come up with a couple of alternatives, and again, I don't know which one they picked, but um, I'm sorry I don't remember which which of you, if any, were on the last email. Maybe it was just the chair. Uh, but um, yeah, it wasn't. Fred, I, it wasn't on okay, there. I can forward it to you. Fred was satisfied with the two conclusions. Great. So, unless there's additional questions, it sounds like it's well in hand between the town and, and our. For some reason, so. it doesn't work out. They'll be back to see you. But we have every reason to think now that staff has worked it out. Fantastic. Um, so, Mark, could I ask you to read the motion? Move that the board close the hearing regarding a new poll request at Franklin and Grove Streets. Second that. Thank you. Any further discussion? I just want to, you know, when will we know the resolution? Um, I'll ask tomorrow. Um, I think they were looking at the end of May, but I'll double check. I'm just asking because if we're right. closing this, then that means we're satisfied. Yeah. But we're satisfied without knowing the answer. Um, you're, you're relying on the fact that the engineers have represented to me that all the solutions okay. left on the table that's, that's are fine. satisfactory to the town. Just, you know, I'm just trying to understand it. Yeah, and just so you know, on your behalf, the engineers have hearings all the time. Not all the time, once in a while, polls and other things. Um, they only come to you when the engineers and the party, are, in this case RMLD, can't work it out. Mm. Or the Got driveway it. hearings, they can't work it out, so they come to you for an exception. So if, you know, certainly anyone such as Fred is willing to come, is welcome to come to that hearing when the engineers hold it. They had one this morning, or today at 6.30 on a different issue. If for some reason he's not satisfied, it may well end up back in your laps. Okay. Uh, but it's definitely not the original proposal that was the subject of this hearing. Great. That's yeah. so if plenty the, for me. So if the issue was resolved, was ended up for whatever reason not being resolved, we could reopen the hearing. You'd yep. start a new we one. Start a new yeah. hearing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I have a motion. I have a second. All those in favor? Great. And there's a second motion. Second motion. Yep. Yeah. Move that the board take no action as the issue has been resolved and RMLD will work with the town's engineering division on the matter. Great. Do I have a second? Second. second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Great. So next up we have reviewing the town manager goals. So where take a look at the time. Look at the time. Okay. I have nine minutes. I, <laughs> we've allocated half an hour for this. I don't think uh, Bob needs quite that much time to go through all of them. I thought he could give us an update, especially for those of you that are new, um, and then we could leave it open for questions. Yeah, and I think um, once you do the next agenda item or one of the next ones and have liaisons assigned to projects, that's where I can really get into more detail with one or two members mm -hmm. um, on any number of these. So I'll try to get these kind of at a high level. Great. Um, and I, I do understand there's two new members, so I'll try to differentiate between uh, you know, what you may not have heard. Um, I think you're pretty well familiar with the elementary school space needs that was reported at town meeting. The senior slash community center is really not changed from February, uh, March or so. Um, there was a presentation in front of this board uh, from a fellow from the state that uh, basically, to, from my summary was, uh, the seniors and the kids don't want to be in the same place. Um, there are other communities exploring that. Um, we'll see. 
Um, I had a meeting on Monday, and again, depending on which, which of you is a liaison, I'm happy to go into a little more detail about some opportunities within the town. Um, there still does need to be a focus group or a, a focal group uh, to head uh, this project. The Council on Aging was asked and did not have interest in leading it, but they certainly had interest in participating in it. Um, again, when you have liaisons, you can discuss whether senior slash community center is one or two topics. Um, it's just put there for simplicity as, as an idea. Um, just to say this out loud, because we've discussed it at school committee meetings, if you're going to bring in an educational component, so you remember a few years back the early education center that the schools had discussed, it's it's pretty much impossible to have an early educational component and something else combined for security reasons. The educational piece has to be significantly different and secure for the children. Um, if you're going to combine it with a scene center, you might imagine that the hours are offsetting, um, but that does not rec remove the requirement for security uh, for the students. So you couldn't have the seniors where the kids are during the day, for instance. But if it's a community center, you could. Um, so to the extent there's two populations with offsetting demands on time, for instance, you could do that. But just, just to be clear, for formal public education, that's really a non-starter uh, for this topic. The superintendent Isn't that part that. completely separate? Yeah, well, it should be. There has been discussion in the community about combining them. I just wanted to say that out loud. Yeah, I mean, that, that was pretty clear when we went through, through this exercise four or five years ago. Yeah. That it had to be a standalone, um, which really kind of disappears from your radar screen. Right. Yeah, effectively, right. Um, so wait, just to the extent oh, that it's early education, as you differentiated, right? Right. But if it were community, right, and, and not educational specifically, but community focused, that that's a different opportunity. Yeah. Just yeah. the pure so that remains to be seen whether it's. I mean, the whole idea of a community center has different populations. Right. Not one of them is early childhood education. Right. Agreed. I mean, you know, there could be multiple. Um, groups being served in the, in the under the broad category, you know, community center. But okay. um, shortly, you'll see some new uh, banners going up and some new uh, parking and wayfinding signs in the downtown. Hopefully, you'll notice that's the point of them being there. Um, we're just about finished that part of the project as soon as they're put up, uh, which again will be pretty obvious. You'll see them. We're also going to. Um, do some of the parking signs with the wayfinding branding. And we have to be really careful. If it's a regulatory sign, it has to be red and white, green and white, or blue and white, depending on what type of regulation it is. In order for us to give someone a ticket, we have to follow certain protocol. But for other signs in terms of, hey, there's a parking lot back there, that's not regulatory, that's just telling you there's a parking lot, that's where you'll see the, the branding efforts. And there's some really, what I think is some really attractive banners that will be going up uh, primarily on Haven Street. If um, you know, you look up, you'll see them on the poles. The poles that are ready to have them, we decided to go with those. Um, few, if any, will go on Main Street because the poles aren't ready for that. They're not designed for that. We could change them in the future, but we wanted to sort of see how this looked. I, I think it'll look nice. Uh, the long-term planning, we had another uh, conference call yesterday with the consultant. Um, again, I want to talk to two liaisons about this. Um, part of this is certainly the Walkersbrook area, but honestly, it's all the way from Main Street all the way down to Wakefield on the Walkersbrook. It's not just the DPW site, it's the whole thing. So we want to have a pretty detailed discussion uh, before anything is, is brought back to the full board. Um, sometime last fall, the master plan update is CPDC's uh, purview, if you will, and they said no. They had too many other things to do. Um, they said they'd look at it again in the future. Uh, let's see, anything else that we're not done? Seven and eight are just ongoing. Amy and, and Laura are doing a good job on some archival work. Um, when they're finished, well, they'll never be finished. When they're further along, they'll probably come in and want to give you an update. Community events you saw tonight, a, n a number of them. The town is involved in, in many, but not all, of those events. Um, all the finance was concluded before. Uh, both finance and DPW have policies now into town council, and if he should ever be able to pry himself loose from the other town's town meetings, then he'll be able to do some work on things like that. Um, you saw the work on the building security study, 
and the building security issue, I would say this is now 100% done in terms of building security study, and now there's next steps that we'll have to talk about for FY20. Um, the general bylaw review completed. You can see the gender neutral and the cleanup at town meeting. Uh, Chief Burns did a phenomenal job on a comprehensive emergency plan. It's literally this thick. So if anyone wants to read it sometime. Uh, so Can I just say that um, I don't know if you guys get a chance to read the thing that Chief Burns puts out. It's joint. Yeah. It's really not just fire department no. related. No, it's As a matter of fact, it's comprehensive in that regard. And um, yeah. it's, um, I mean, when I first started looking at it, I was like, how come we're talking about all this other stuff? And then I realized that he's really our emergency management guy. Right. Um, so uh, that's a great read. He, I mean, yeah, it's very comprehensive. He puts it out. Is it every week or every other? Is every week? Yeah, I think it's every week. We get a lot of email, but yeah, yeah, that's when I stop to read all the time. It mm -hmm. really is yeah, exceptional from an information standpoint. Third or fourth week of May, there's a it's called an REPC, a Regional Emergency Planning Committee. Uh, Reading is, is participates. We go to Wakefield for a meeting that's about 35 communities. Um, you know, the joke is if there's an emergency in the area, Reading has to be in charge. I've actually attended several of those. And they are, they do look. And we show up. Like something comes up, they time. turn around and look at Burns. Or, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, and there's some very qualified and very talented people in the room. But other towns normally show up with one, two, or maybe three people, and we come with 10 to 15. Because we work as a group, and we travel as a group. Um, and it's it's places like the Reading Housing Authority. Um, it's just a wide range of community participants. Um, one or two meetings ago, I wrote up uh, that I wanted to discuss the personnel policies. I can hit a little of that tonight, but I, I'd rather do it with a liaison. Um, as you might imagine, the hiring market is very tight right now. It's very tough. I've said to the board in the past that we've hired people that have never shown up. As an example, not the way I was raised, but that, that's happened. Um, it's a complicated area. Uh, pay is certainly a, a factor, but is by no means the only factor in today's hiring decision. Um, so I've really, after a discussion with the department heads, I've really decided I had to take this on personally and not just at a distance, and I had to be responsible for every word in the personnel policies once it's redone. So I will do that, and I would like to push that into next year to complete. And it goes hand in hand with the next one, employee retention. Um, customer service training, we're just about done. I'm, I'm still not doing a particularly good job myself, but I'm reminded almost daily with an email. Uh, something calls it Kennedy. Yeah, Kennedy training. We've signed up for a lot of electronic training. And I've heard from some of my colleagues that it's very good. Um, in addition, we've had a number of required in-person seminars over at the police station uh, in the community room. Um, and it's a wide range of topics. Um, you know, if you really stop and think about, for instance, you can look through the budget and see all the different things we do as an organization and all the different <coughs> kinds of people we have that work here. And then all the kinds of, all the different kinds of, uh, you know, personal relationships they have with different parts of the community. It's really, one thing doesn't always fit all, I guess is what I'm saying. <coughs> so that uh, what public might works might emphasize uh, wouldn't necessarily work at the library and vice versa. So it's a, it's a somewhat complex organization. Um, but we've generally made really good progress in our goals with one or two exceptions maybe. Um, this Thursday we're having a department head, an assistant department head meeting, and we're actually starting to brainstorm about FY20 goals. Um, that's also something I'd like to have a discussion. There's, there was different discussions over the last year about more goals, less goals. Um, I'd really like to spend, personally, I'd like to spend more time on very important goals rather than having a lot of goals we just check a box. Mm -hmm. um, but I can't necessarily decide those goals. I'm certainly going to need your help. Um, so we'll start well, as a department head. Too long. We really need that. Well, I don't, you know, my predecessor, with all due respect, liked to check the box yeah. and liked lists. Um, and that's okay. And, and that's not ineffective. I think we're at a point in the community, especially with an override having passed, that we really take a hard look at ourselves and decide what are the two or three things we really want to do. And those two or three things probably can't be done in a year and really might need a lot of different inputs, for instance. Um, so you know, we'll see what department heads and, and assistants come up with Thursday. 
plus we've done a lot of house cleaning, <coughs> if you will, and we've updated our policies as it is. So we're in pretty good shape. I still have to do some town manager work, but we're, we're in pretty good shape. Um, so probably on a June or July agenda, it doesn't really matter, we'll want another discussion, a preliminary goals discussion. Um, and I'd really, again, like your feedback. And if we could finalize those probably by August, September, that would be helpful. Um, the way our schedules work as a staff, you know, some, some of us are different, but generally speaking, we do a lot of work actually in the summer and the early part of the fall on goals because uh, we're not yet preparing for a town meeting and the various other things that happen uh, during the year. Um, so it's really helpful to have some guidance sooner than later. Okay. Um, okay. Again, through the liaison process or really for many process you'd like, if you ever have questions on any of these, I'm happy to answer them uh, either in person, on the phone, or an email, whichever is most appropriate. I've met with some of you personally. I still owe you a meeting, I know. That's we'll get, we'll get it done. Yeah, we'll, we will. we'll do it. <laughs> but again, the, the door is open. I'm not always there, but <laughs> <laughs> the door is open. <laughs> I do look forward to your liaison assignments because I, I just know there's a bunch of things I'd like to talk to you mm -hmm. about as, as you know, yeah. one or two people. Okay, Thank so you, that's Bob. It. Um, so we're doing well on time. Thank you, Bob, for the yep. brevity. Um, why don't we take, if we have 10 minutes, to ask Bob some questions, and we can also put this on the agenda going forward if the discussion goes beyond that. Okay. Yeah. I just had a, cl uh, a, cl a question to clarify something in the retention you described, um, some sort of reorganization based on what the library has done, uh, if I read that correctly. Let me see what I wrote. I mean, what the library did was reorganize their department. Right. Um, let me yeah, just take a look quick. Yeah, okay. Oh, so she was working with Jean to see if Jean needed to do a uh, summer or any of that with some vacant positions. There's always an opportunity to look. Oh. That's as an example. And, and how does that go to employee retention? I'm just not making the connection. Okay. That's okay. Um, well, it depends how you do it, but um, the library's model and the one Jean has used mm -hmm. is involved every employee. In terms of what is our department good at, what does it need to improve at, mm -hmm. um, are we using you effectively, are we giving you the right tools, so things like that. Right. Okay. Thanks. Mark. Um, question on capital planning. Is it a, where it's 100% complete, are you looking at that as an annual activity? Or, okay. I think it might be valuable to, as we do a long-term capital plan already, to maybe yeah. be thinking about that as more of an ongoing as well as the annual. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm certainly open to whatever the board wants as a role, but as I said in the budget process, I think the next 12 months um, are critical in capital in terms of priorities. There's some you know, unfundable things, if you will, and we don't want people to be surprised about the library and then an override. You know, we want to make sure we mm -hmm. lay things out there clearly for all. Um, that's where we'll need the most help. The nuts and bolts of capital is kind of generally, you can see the capital plan takes care of itself. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, I have two. Uh, one goes to, I think, a couple of uh, overlap between a couple of goals, um, one being long-term planning on economic development and the other um, employee retention slash personnel. I was just wondering uh, an update on an economic development director and hiring or interviews or how things are going there. I think of what I can say. <laughs> um, an offer is forthcoming. Okay. We found an excellent candidate, and we hope they're not listening now, so the price goes up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was really very, very happy at the last set of okay. we had, Great. and I'm very hopeful that uh, by our next meeting, we'll have some good news. Um, and the second question is around customer service training. I know that you have a lot of demands on your time and haven't been able to participate in the online um, web-based training, but I was wondering if you if you attend the uh, the training in person that's that's led by HR. I have, yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that was required. <laughs> Great. I just wanted to clarify. Thank and it you. was good. One of them was especially good because it was led by our labor council. Okay. Who, I'm one of the few employees that knows them really well, and mm -hmm. it was really nice to see all the employees interacting well. Mm -hmm. It was very well done. Very Great. well received. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, to to play off of something you said a few minutes ago, Bob, when I look at a list of 21 things and I look at those 21 things, um, I find probably at least half of them 
it, you're, it's you supervising people mm -hmm. doing the work. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to me, that's it's got to get done. Yeah. But it's kind of you know I'd like to support what you're talking about, and that is to put a lot more time in a lot fewer categories. Um, I know you're managing those people because the work's getting done. But when we think about it in terms of is it a goal or is it yeah always, to me I you know look that stuff surfaces when it doesn't get done right um, and you know and, and you're accountable for that mm -hmm. I mean you know you're matter of fact you know you're accountable to us and we're only looking at you so yeah. I mean I see so many of those things as things that you just do on a day-to-day -day basis as part of your CEO job here and you know and I would really like us to work closely mm -hmm. As the liaisons roll out, you know, pick a hand, a small handful of things that can have far-reaching effect in beyond the, beyond a year. Yeah. Um, I really think that I want to endorse that line of thinking from my perspective. So, yeah, things as simple as DPW and finance department policies, you know, they're not complicated, but actually, you own most of those. They're in your policies, right? So they're doing the legwork, but it's actually going to come to you. So that that's a sneaky one that actually is important. Almost anything with the word policy next to it is is yours in one in one way or another. Whereas hiring a TPW director, well, I better just do that. <laughs> so I'm happy to do whatever you like along those lines, but I do think, um, and this we discussed this over the winter. Uh, multi-year goals are very worth talking about just because you can't do it in a year doesn't mean you don't think about it and talk about it and work on it and that the, the the fine line between town manager goals and select board goals can be blurry mm -hmm. there's no reason it has to be totally separate we each have a role you know, in some of these yeah. efforts all right if there's no other discussion, why don't we take a five minute break before we jump into liaison assignments.
So, let's get started. Oh, yeah. Um, all right, so now we have the slick board liaison assignments. These are done annually. Uh, some only have um, one liaison, some have two due to the heavy load um, of that particular board committee or commission's meeting schedule. Um, so this year we were each asked to rank these from one to 30 some odd. Um, some of us only did one through 10. I think that's fine. I took the liberty of going through and sort of loosely trying to put this together. I know Andy did something similar. Yeah. I don't know if the rest of you have gone through the very fun exercise. But well, the way I broke it down was I, I tried to have everyone have the majority of their top five, and if not possible, then the majority of their top ten. Um, the one thing I would comment on is last year I was the liaison, and so it's Barry, to both CPDC and ZBA. Those, depending on what is happening, can be intensive. Mm -hmm. And my recommendation from my experience this past year is that we not have the same people be the liaisons for CPDC and ZBA. Mm -hmm. uh, it just makes us, um, I, I felt like a negligent liaison. Um, because I wasn't able to attend a lot of their meetings. So um, that's my only comment there. Beyond that, sort of I'm open to how we want to address this. Andy and I could each circulate our list and we can try and piece it together. Yeah, I'll just explain my list. I went, I simply went through and gave the assignments to the highest. There's a hard copy. Oh, thanks. I so you guys did this collaboratively? No. No, we actually did it separately. separately. Mine's, a little, so, so my, mine's a little different. I just simply went with, um, I, I think what we had agreed upon at the, at the, for the last policy round, but that was just to have it ranked and then assign the one or two highest rank uh, the people with the one or two highest rankings the assignment and then adjust from there so i simply went across and and gave uh, and put the the name of the person or persons who ranked it highest now um after i did that i noticed that there was an you know each approximately should have 10 or 11 assignments but we might want to play around with that. Um, so we I did have 10 or 11 assignments because we're doubling up. Is that what's yeah, going on? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, okay. It, I think it works out to four with 10, one with 11. But mm -hmm. um, there were a couple. I think Anne was a little short. You know, funky things happen, and Mark was a little short. So, so I. I gave up, and I had like 14. So they were relatively close. And I just uh, removed myself from and gave gave it to um, the person who ranked one or either tied or ranked one or two away from me. And I just gave it to that person. And it, it sort of evened things out fairly well. The, the names are, on, are just along the side. And on the second page, uh, there's simply a line called uh, totals. And you'll see, I don't know what the seven means, ignore it, but it's 10, 10, 14, 10. Um, Make sense? Yeah. So uh, as I That's mentioned to Bob when I sent in my preferences, I think Bob's suggestion had been 1 to 36, but you may just want to do 1 to 25. So I did 1 to 25, but indicated that I was actually that, that extremely flexible. So oh, right. um, that remains true. I, I, I feel very flexible in terms of my 1 through 25. D D okay, and these, these, are, these are my version. This way. Uh, I should want my hand one to Bob so he can. Thank you. All right. So I thought the way we could do this is um, just start at the top of the list and work our way down. Mm. Which one are we working on? So are, are they in the same order? Yeah. Yes. They should be in the same order. Yeah. I mean, I used the list Bob sent me. So yeah. yeah so the VASP we already agreed upon, which is me and Andy for this year. Mm -hmm. um, for the school committee, mm -hmm. um, we currently have Andy and one vacancy. Um, given the rankings there, I suggested Andy and Anne. OK. 
Поэтому away my extra assignments, you'll see that I, I listed Landry and Halsey there because they tied for 20. Um, but I'm fle totally flexible. And just as a, if, for my own edification, mm -hmm. when we have two members, yeah. as then we, may, we might trade off what yeah. meetings mm -hmm. we cover. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Generally speaking, if there's a hot topic, mm -hmm. <coughs> both members tend to attend. Mm -hmm. um, if there's sort of more standard items on the agenda than usually just one, and then you tag team. Okay. It's a nice way of doing it. Okay. And school committee, in my opinion, um, they, they mean they meet a lot. Right. So. Right. I might. And from a couple of years back, the discussion on the board, when there's two, it's quite often good to have one person stay to the next year, like in VASC. Have two year terms, if you will, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. continuity. So there's mm -hmm. a person doing it the first year for themselves, the second year for themselves, and a new person joins them, and so on. That makes yeah. sense. That's good. It, the school committee is good because they have a liaison to us. <laughs> so the liaisons can come talk to All right. Um, so. So, Anne and Andy, you're comfortable with school committee? Sure. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, so, for the regional school district, um, John, you ranked it as 15. How do you feel about that? For the school committee? The regional school, school district. Oh, I'm fine to take that. I, I mean, I, I actually know the elected officials there very well, and I'm happy to be involved with that. Okay. I mean, I, let me can I just say that, you know, it got to be 15, not because of anything other than, you know, the, the exercise of taking 36 yes, and agree. ranking them. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree. I, I felt like I was on a fool's errand. <laughs> I, I will just tell you that. I mean, uh, as, as I went through this and sort of loosely assigned people to liaisons, I didn't bother looking past 15 at that point. It's all sort of up to here. And, you know, and for me, just because something was 15th or 20th doesn't mean... I, I'm not interested or not willing. I mean, I, I honestly think, I, I know we have to march through this exercise this way, but I just want to say out loud that I really think the next time this gets done, we should do it with a system that we've used for the last four or five years, which is a one, I love it, a three, I hate it, a two, I'm happy to do it, um, and I end up with at least one, I hate it, and a couple of, I love it. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it really worked, and it, it was kind of simple to follow. We can, we can absolutely revisit that come springtime. I think at one point I, I switched something that was around a three with something that was around a 20 because I just was looking at my full list and thinking I needed sort of a diverse portfolio. <laughs> yeah. it just That's the way to think about it. <laughs> so but, uh, just, to, just to comment on that, um, we all voted for this process uh, recently, and I think it's on our policy. Um, it, it, it is. Well, I yeah. asked so, a question so at the time, too. I'm, I'm gonna, given the time and the fact that we have yeah. about 40 yeah. of these to go through, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. just going to keep plowing through. Yeah. Sounds yeah. good. So for RMLD, uh, I have myself and Mark. Everybody comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. That's fine. Great. Um, bylaw. Yep. John, how do you feel about that? Ambivalent. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, that was the right uh, answer. <laughs> for, so for finance. For finance committee, an interesting thing happened, which is that Anne and Mark both listed this as five and six. Um, I, it strikes me as a little odd to have two former members of that committee acting as liaisons. I thought it might be nice to shake it up a little bit. Agreed. Um, I've had nine years. That's <laughs> okay. so, Does that make it easy? Um, so in that spirit, um, John, how do you feel about being it being yourself and Anne? I'm f I'm fine with that. I you know I enjoy the work. Great. Um, permanent building committee, uh, Andy and either Mark or John. Well, I've been working on the capital side, mm -hmm. and so it's kind of a match to the permanent building committee, I think. But you know I'm not trying to you know hog that but I'm happy to serve there okay. yeah. you know I think that's fine I mean my preference is more kind of the economic development side of it 
Okay. Um, yeah. Maybe the marketing and encouragement. Uh, and then Frankly, I like working with these guys. They're all, you know, done. their brain is organized the Great. same way as mine. So, John, um, RCTV, um, I have, I suggested John and Mark. Can I just clarify and whether the PVC had one or two? I have it here as two. Okay. Oh, you did? And that was Andy and John. Andy just ranked it higher than everybody else. What's uh, this? On the PBC? Yeah, the Permanent Building Committee, line seven. Line seven. Okay. I didn't, I don't have it here as, I ranked it at all. You have it as a five. Huh. <clears throat> Let's uh, do this. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay. So, RCTV. Um, John, Mark, and Anne all rank that right about the same. Uh, mm -hmm. John is the highest, so I suggested John and Mark. Okay, I'm about to do that. Anne, are you okay with that? That is fine. Okay. So, cultural. Um, Anne, are you comfortable with that one? Yes. Great. Climate. Andy had that one ranked the highest? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Um, Ice Arena, John. Yes. Great. So now we reach an interesting situation because we have walkable reading, the celebration, animal control, um, that there wasn't sort of a clear leader, leader on mm -hmm. these. Um, uh, and the same is true for the Board of Registrars. And Historical Commission and, and District. They're a little bit further down, but... Um, I figure there's five of those that sort of ended up in the air, so we can just take one. Mm -hmm. Grab walkable if that's open. Great. Celebration. Yeah, I, you know. John, okay. We're talking about the 375th, is that what we're talking about? It's the general celebration one. They do, um. They, they, did, they don't meet very often. Yeah. They have a trust fund of okay. some sort. Um, what are they celebrating? Whatever they want to celebrate. Okay. okay. Um, I'm, I'm my happy guy. I like to celebrate. Okay. I'll, I'll take animal control. Oh, could why I, not? I was interested. Oh. I was. Did you want animal control? Interested in that. If, if, if I it, I've only met once in the last seven years. So. That's why I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I will give that one to Andy. No, Vanessa, if, if you, uh, you have <laughs> chair responsibilities, so uh, that, you know, if you want to take one, that one, that's fine. Okay. I will take animal control. <coughs> um, <coughs> I'm going to skip over board of uh, um, moderator for just a moment, um, just so we continue on the ones that were sort of floaters, which is uh, board of registrars and custodian of soldiers and sailors' graves mm. and historical. So board of registrars. Those are not in line here. They jump around. I do. I jump around a little bit. Um, board of registrars is 16 in the original spreadsheet. Yep. Um, so, Andy or Anne? I just said it doesn't matter. Great, let's do Andy. Did you say Andy or Anne? Andy. Okay. So this is Board of Registrars. The Board of Registrars, yep. And then I'm gonna jump down under public service to custodian of soldiers and sailors' graves. Uh, Anne? Right there, if that can be me, that's fine. Great. Um, uh, and then the other one that is a little bit of a floater here is down under community development, under historical and historic district. Is there anyone who has a, a particular interest there? So Landry is custodian? Yes. Custodian, okay. I'm historical. sorry, what was the question? Historical? Historical and historic district. You're going to reproduce this list, right? Yes, of course. <laughs> We're going to try. Uh, you we'll can, you can have notes. mine. It's okay. Okay. All right. Uh, um, historical and historic district. Any takers? Um, we can table that one. Why don't we table that one? We'll do a tally later. So, uh, back up to moderator. This has got to be the most boring thing to experience for those people watching at home. Uh, moderator, line 15. Um, Anne, John, myself, and Mark all listed this on the higher side. There is only one. John did have it as the highest. But I think you end up with more than everyone else. So I don't know how you feel about that one. 
Well, who's the who's the retired guy at the table? Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. I, I just say it, you know. I mean, I, there's things I can get done during during the day, hours. you know. Fair enough. I mean, all right. I mean, let's get it. Let's get it sorted, and then you know what? If it turns out to be too much, I mean, okay. this isn't like you don't chisel this into concrete. I mean, mm -hmm. if we need to can need your done. hand, you can right. get some help someplace. All right. So, constables, uh, John. Yeah. Right. So, audit. I'm happy to attend. Great. Um, retirement, Anne. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Commissioner of Trust Funds and Veterans Memorial Trust Funds. John, how do you feel about those? I've served on those before. That's fine. Okay. It's a good fit for me. Wonderful. Um, Council on Aging. Both Mark and I expressed interest on this one. Um, John, I know you've served on that before. Are you That's okay fine. with that? Yeah. Great. Um, so, so which one is getting it? Council on Aging, uh, myself and Mark. Okay. Great. So Board of Health, uh, how about Andy and Anne? Sure. Great. Um, I like recreation. They're a fun group. Um, and just based on ranking me and Andy, Mark, I know you also had that one fairly higher up, but I think you've gotten some others, so okay, okay. with you? Yes. Great. We've already done custodian of soldiers and sailors graves. CPD sees where it starts to get fun. Um, all of uh, four of us listed it as a top three. Um, hey, I'm clean on that one. Uh, you are <laughs> off. Uh, um, I, wow. I'm willing to back away from that one, even though I think it's a, it's a I think it's one of the more important ones um, that we liaise with. So that leaves it down to Andy, Mark, and Anne. <coughs> my recommendation was Andy and Anne, but that's just my two cents based on the numbers. Um, uh, the, the reason I was interested in it was because I think it, I'd like to work on the um, Downtown Economic Development Committee or whatever that ends up being, and I thought those two went hand in hand. And sort of my rationale as well. That those would be the closest, unless you got MAPC involved. Boy, the four of you guys were like really jockeying for those. those <laughs> well, I mean, it, I would have what put, happened to me? I would have put it higher. But Who's been here a long time and understands what the hell that's all about? <laughs> I'm happy to to, to 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 give it over to Anne if 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 I could still work in the downtown economic development uh, work group or whatever it's called, and then just use one of you as a resource through CBDC. Yeah, so I actually, it's so funny, when, if you flip the sheet over, mm -hmm. um, under subcommittees for EDC, oh, I have yeah. put oh, Mark and Andy. Oh, okay, then, then well, that'll that work, work fine, okay, yeah, great. as long as there's a crossover. So for CPDC then, we'll have Andy and, or sorry, Ann and Mark. Okay, great. Um, in that case, since uh, for ZBA, then, um, Anne, would you be comfortable taking the ZBA? Did we just say that I was going to be doing CPDC? Oh, you're doing CPDC. Okay, right. Sorry. Uh, Andy, and can yeah. you do yes, ZBA? Sure. Okay. Right. Just quick, just quickly, because I sense that Andy, if you if you prefer to switch or swap ZBA for CPDC, if that was important to you, that I'm fine with that. I'm happy to do ZBA if you'd really like to do CPDC. Uh, if you don't mind, I mean, that's I don't have a strong preference. That's fine, but I, I sense a slight preference. That's that's okay. fine. So that's all I do. <coughs> yep. Okay, so we'll flip the two of those. Okay, so to clarify, CPDC is Mark and Andy. Mm -hmm. And ZBA is John and Anne. Yes. Whoa. 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 What did I do? <laughs> well, how did I get into that? That's like a number 28 for me. <laughs> well, 28's pretty high. So, so, um, you sort of uh, boxed yourself in the corner because you didn't rank CPDs high enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Who, who, okay. who, 
<laughs> how did that just happen? Did you notice how that happened? No. What about what about the chair? Uh, yeah. I mean, I could take it, John, if you really don't. Uh, I, I I recall someone saying they were they Alvarado were, a lot. I, I, <laughs> have you noticed that? I was uh, take speaking as someone who just did the chair, I sympathize with that. And 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 I heard someone say they were reti- they were retired. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to take ZBA. Okay. All right. Is that better, Tom? Yes. <laughs> I think that's You're experienced fair. in it. Okay. Cool. Uh, so let's skip over historical district mm-hmm. um, for a moment. Conservation. Mm-hmm. Um, just based on rankings, uh, I suggested John and Anne. You had them as one and three. Are you comfortable mm-hmm. with that? I am. Yes. Everybody else? Yep. Yeah. Great. Um, Reading Housing Authority, I had this one as the highest, so yep. we'll be okay with that. Mm. Great. Um, public safety, um, technically John and I had this one ranked, but I'm willing to step back on this one, Anne, if you want it, for, for police and safe, for um, police and fire. Mm-hmm. Um, so... so. Is that two of so us? So that's that, yeah. John. That would be you and Anne. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Last year we added a second one. So, A track we have Anne, who ranked at the highest. Pretty good. Uh, <coughs> Arcasa. There's one liaison here. Both Mark and John ranked this high. So, I sort of leave it to the two of you to talk it through. Do get out. If you want it for continuity, that's fine. I'm interested, but I'm happy to stand This out. isn't a bad year to have two just because the grant expires and you're exploring kind of the formation of what to do. Um, here's the only problem. Um, I think their bylaws need to be amended because there's only room for one. True. Yes, until October 1st, you're right. Um, so, uh, you know, I mean, I have been doing this for five years. I've kind of got a flow of it, Mark. Yeah, um, I'm fine with that. Too. And um, I was involved in it before I was on the Board of Selectmen. Yeah. Um, so um, I would like to maintain yeah. um, membership there. Now, I mean, if we need to do it with a different liaison, I could petition them. And you know, as a citizen, board on October first, you can just yeah. do what you will. We see what happens. So why don't we, Mark? It seems like you're amenable to keeping John. Yes. So why don't we, John? Since since you have a nice history here, um, we can keep you as the primary, and then in October, what would the process be then? Because then they fall under tap. It's no longer grant funded. Well, right now it's it's. It's under Articles of Incorporation or whatever, whatever they're called. There were certain bylaws that had right. to be matched in order to get the grant funding. Right. One of the so one of those articles included that some that there was room for one person on that board from this body. Right. So it, they were very specific. Yeah, they are. Um, in their bylaws for the grant funding. Okay. In other words, they they check it off. You want this, 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 and this, mm-hmm. and they had to comply. Okay. So I, you know, between now and October, that's going to change. You know, and I, you know, Mark, I think that it would not be a problem at all. Um, and I know you'd be welcome to come. And you know, it's yeah. just a question of. We don't vote on anything cataclysmic. <laughs> okay. I mean, you know, we, not it's really, at the door. you know, it, it's a, it's an exchange of ideas, yeah. really, and it's, an, it's a support mechanism. Yeah. So I can be an attendee. For you could be, yes. you could be showing up, and then with the idea that there's going to be some changes. Uh, we have employees by the way. that just show up because they're interested. We yeah. do have a lot, actually, a surprising amount of people show up. Mm. Yeah. So. Um, all right, great. So we'll have John and then um, Mark. We can revisit over the summer or. September and perhaps you'll have to join officially in October. Okay. Okay, great. Library trustees. So Andy and Anne, you both ranked this comparably. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't I don't have strong feelings here. They're a fun group. I did it for FinCom. I like them. Um, you essentially it's between the two of you. I have I don't have a strong preference either way. Someone pick. You have a coin. Um, 
Well, Egg, help me if I knew. <laughs> it, it, help me if I knew that I, I, I would do his 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 um, the historic district commission and historic. Um, I always get these two mixed Historical up. Historical commission and historic yeah, district. Uh, I'd be happy to do those, but if I'm going to do those, I'd sort of like to so cap at that. But I'm, I don't feel okay. strongly about doing those. Um, so I'll, I'll add one other variable to this, which is under public works. We have trails and forest. Andy, you ranked these at 10 and 11, which is higher than everyone else. Yeah, they're fun. They're, they're, so yeah. would you like to take those and Anne can take library? Uh, yeah, that's sure. fine with her. Great. Okay, so cemetery is another one that now we're under public works. Um, this is another fun group. They're lively. Um, <laughs> no pun intended. This is another committee that meets on top of us. Yeah. Yes, they tend to meet at about six o'clock. This is this is a tough one for me to attend. Otherwise, I would join them again. They meet when you may have a similar problem. That would be it. Somewhat challenging for me. Yeah. Um, do we have anyone else who can be here at six o'clock when they meet? Sometimes. Okay. Andy or John? I, you know, I'm open to that, but I think I have a list as I, long as I was going to say. I yeah, think you yeah. do. The, All right. Um, so. <laughs> ooh, I, yeah. How frequently do they meet? Monthly. And they do meet on Tuesdays. Yeah. It's kind of like recreation. Mm -hmm. So, all right, let's mm -hmm. pause on cemetery then um, and go to MWRA. I'd be happy to do that one. I agree that shouldn't be John. Yeah, I agree it shouldn't be John. I think I'm a little short, so why don't... There's a lot of date and stuff with that. Yes. Is there? Um, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, there is. I mean, I, you know, I've done this... Mm -hmm. Again, I you know I had the date I had the day time available, mm -hmm. um, and I coincidentally happened to have a twenty year relationship with the executive director. So I mean, so that's kind of why I was in that spot to fires. However, you know I mean somebody else can take it. Mark, you can take it. Can you um, do the daytime? And you know it has some daytime stuff. Some is workable if it's always. Well, daytime. there you go. So define some <laughs> monthly. Um, Weekly? Yeah, but you don't have to go every right. month. I mean, they're very good about keeping you up to date on stuff. Mm -hmm. and, um, so let's give um, shake things up, and we'll give Mark. Give Mark. Once we go through this, we'll do a Mark count. goes to cemetery. No, uh, cemetery. Wait, no. Uh, Mark is MWRA. The cemetery is looking like it might be mine. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, we're gonna have to look at this list. Though. We'll have to. We'll yeah. recount. Yeah. We'll, we'll recount. Yeah. Cool. We're not gonna give you a twenty. All right, let's tell you put John in a cemetery. All right, um, so can I ask everyone if you've been keeping track, hopefully you have, of what your assignments are? Absolutely not. I, <laughs> I, I think okay. I have. Are you kidding I have, I have seven. I I Come on, John. Just circle the ones. All right, okay, I have 11. All right, let me do mine. I did tell you I'm retired, right? <laughs> We're going to have to upgrade our software program here for me. Yeah. So I have eight. I have seven. I have nine. I have seven primary, you know, primaries and two, two, two first, you know? Double so up. I can so take nine. Nine. All right, so John doesn't get any more. Let's give more. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll take historical since 15. I only have. 15. Okay, I'm not getting any more, right? We're not getting any more. I'll You'll take, take historical. Yep. Double, so you have another person with you. But yeah, 15 of your initial next to it. Vanessa, you just changed historical to yourself. And I'll, I've assigned historical to myself. So, Mark, how many do you have? Um, I have eight. Anne, how many do you have? 11. Okay, so Anne is in good shape. Mark and I are the light. Um, <coughs> I'm going to take a look at the back. Uh, don't forget you have well, other things. Well, we'll get there. We'll get there. All right. Where's so historical? I just want to take a look at what John has since he has a lot. John, I have you for regional school district. That's not that's a lot. Happy. That's, that's not what? A, okay. That's not a lot. And as I said, we have an elected official in town yeah. who I commiserate with on a regular basis. So, right. uh, it, it, you know, that can probably be done more by by phone and by reviewing the minutes more than anything else. Okay. So I, you get that one for me. Um, yes. Yeah, bylaw so committee is that is that true? I have you as bylaw. <laughs> Mark, I think that's a good job for you. you, <laughs> you I think that's it. an exceptional job. Wait, for Mr. Just, take it just for a moment. The bylaw committee. How many could we possibly rank? 
There were 38 in total. Just <laughs> take a look at the number I gave it. I will remind you that I have like a number 32 that I got. How, how often is how often Just let me tell you, order, you're going to enjoy it. These are important committees that people volunteer for. You're going to really enjoy working with the bylaw committee. Uh, I have and you can work on things like utility access portal. Um, the bylaw committee... Uh, I actually have an interest in it. Depends how uh, I, I, you know, I like I write this is regulations. Right up your alley. And, yes, this is all about rules and regulations. Right, so you're going to like it. They only meet three times a week. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right so why don't we take um, John off of hall, off of bylaw and Thank we'll give God. it to Andy. Okay. <laughs> I got FinCom right. Yes. You have. I got FinCom. permanent building committee yes. who doesn't meet every month. Do and you're thought. sharing that with Andy. They they just about do meet every month. Yeah. yeah. All right. And they meet. Ten, they tend to meet early, like five, six o'clock. And um, okay, RCTV. Yeah, that's a fit. You also have the ice arena. Yeah, that's a the ice arena is three or four times a year, yeah. and you know that that's less formalized mm -hmm. meetings. So, John, you can So, um, are you at nine? Or are you still at eight? One, two, three. Did I add something? I added one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm still at eight. Okay, why don't we give, how do you feel about celebration? We can take that off John's plate. I think that's I feel great. lovely about that's celebration. That's a great idea. Excellent. Now the moderator, I'm, um, I think I ranked that high actually, and we haven't settled on that. I don't know. Alan's such a. I wrote your I name. Put your name. Yeah, next I wrote your name. I'm there. Yeah. Okay. You have that one. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Um. Moderator is a tough guy to work with, though. So. I know. <laughs> He's slippery. I'll get him. Don't worry. He's kidding, Alan. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I am. That's that's my sense of humor. So, all right. Can everyone do a count of their own again, please? And uh, Caitlin, can you count for John? <laughs> Why does Stone get? I get special treatment. You're retired. He's retired. <laughs> <laughs> Six, seven. This is definitely. I got the system. trust funds too, right? Okay, you're down to thirteen. Okay, we're do we're going in the right direction. I'm at eight. I'm at ten. I'm at nine. All right, so I'm is at eleven. All right, Still. Anna's is the only one who has made it to home base. All right. <laughs> um, I'd say that's close enough. All right, so John. That's manageable, given given the. Are you okay with that? Given the composition of the ones that I have, several of these can be managed in the you know pretty comfortably in the day and. Okay. Um, yeah. Which one is that, John? Or uh, all of them? I would say uh, no. <laughs> I, what was the last one you just gave to John? I took away from John. Celebration. 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 I took celebration. Okay. okay, so uh, Mark, is there anyone that you'd like to add to bring you up to 10? We'll make this like a board game. You can steal from anyone on the table. <laughs> I'm picturing this turning into a board game. <laughs> I mean, at least we're having fun. Um, so I wonder if anyone's still watching from home. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with us. It's been and a lot of too. emergency calls in town. <laughs> How are we just going to Hollywood? So, does somebody want the Board of Cemetery Trustees? Well, that was the one, that's the timing one that's tough for us. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just not All sure right. I can make it. Yeah. Somebody took M MWRA, right? Yeah, Mark. Okay, yes, I've good. got it. Mark has it. Vanessa, is Historical District both the Historical Commission and the Historical District Commission? Did you yes. combine those? 13, right? Okay, and who you're doing that? I'll take that. All right. Unless someone else wants to take it. That's right. Who, who owns Library Trustees? Is that, is that you, Andy? Um, yeah. No. That's Anne, yeah. sorry. I, I love the historic stuff, but I'm, I'm, uh, I mean, I'm you kind can take of. You can take it if you want. I'm kind of. Uh, How many are you at? I'm at 10. I take 11. But you're not at 13. <laughs> that would put me at 12. So that's fine. I'm okay. All right. Yeah. So so is that a yes you want historical or no? Are you trying you to catch up or what are you doing? No, I like I like history. Okay, so I will give you historical. <laughs> Thank you. All right. That's not money, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mark, are you looking to add more? I just didn't know if you wanted FinCom. So I, I could do FinCom. I guess my question is with the subcommittees coming up. Right. Yeah. Before kind of finding another one that's a monthly. Maybe we'll give you a heavier subcommittee role. All right. So let's flip that page over and we're on to subcommittees. Who's doing walkable? Me. 
Okay. Good times. So, communications. Um, and this is one that, these are the existing subcommittees from last year. When we, at a future meeting, go through our goals, these may change, Yeah. but we can revisit at that time. So, for existing subcommittees that we have open, um, select board policy communications. Uh, Andy, you ranked that as number one. No, I did. Oh, I did. <laughs> That's right. I'm, I'm sorry. Different ranking. I got confused. <laughs> okay. Uh, so number one, is there? I, I'm. I can stay on that unless someone else would like it. Well, you've. Have you done a fair amount of work? I've on done that? a ton of work on the social media policy. Then I would either give up my spot. Well, that's a two-person. So the, the the communications. Yeah. All right. So why so not? I'll, I'll what about keep Anne? That. Do yeah. we, do we, so does Anne get kicked off of that? I, she, she doesn't need to be. I mean, I'll, well, no. Want, so I'm on it currently. Mm -hmm. Right. I need a second. Right. And nobody. This you know, you've been on there a long. This you've is been the done a lot of work with this already. You need to stay there. Yeah, yeah. So I'm inclined to agree. I think so. I so mean, I, I either know. either in or I, it doesn't matter to me. So, Andy, you ranked it as one, and are you okay with that? Unless you have a dying desire to be for communications. I I care a lot about having a clear communications policy. Um, I don't have to be the one to be developing it, but I think, it, you know, coming on board, I think I've, there's been ambiguity with our community. Mm -hmm. Then, then, then you, why don't you take it? Why don't the two of you work on that? Yeah. I, I don't need to be on there. I just do it because I like to write. That was sort of why I kind of was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so that'll be myself and Ann. So, capital projects. Um, mm, I would like to stay involved in capital John, projects. myself, and Anne all expressed interest in this one. Mm. Um, I also would recommend that we combine Oakland Road with capital projects. Uh, yeah. Bob, I see you nodding. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is one I have a lot of interest in as well. I will. Um, I, I feel like I'm, I'm getting a pretty full portfolio, full and diverse portfolio. <laughs> <I'm happy laughs> okay, so we'll keep that as John and me. Um, and John, are you okay, as I said, combining Oakland Road? Absolutely. Right. I mean, every time we met, it's, uh, we, we talked about, about both of them. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. So housing trust. So Andy, I think you did this one last year. Yeah, okay. I, I, and Barry, for, Barry was sort of the lead on this and had some develop some material. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to keep doing it, but I need um, so some assistance. Mark, I can join. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Great. Okay. So that takes us to economic development. <clears throat> um, given the current distribution, I was going to recommend Andy and Mark. Good for Mark. John, you had you said you were available to one. Which but, one? Uh, economic development. The new yeah. economic. The new economic. Yeah. Yes, I am. So, both Andy and Mark also expressed interest on this one, given your current load with the other. That's fine. Items. Are you okay with that? So, Andy and Mark, you're okay I'm, with that? Yeah. Yes. Great. And then RMLD, I'd like to stay on that one. Um, yeah. I've just been following it for the last two years. Mark, you I've also been expressed doing interest well for a while with RMLD. Okay, so I, I think the way this is broken down, uh, John, you have the least, which makes sense, I think, given mm -hmm. your load on the liaison side. Mm -hmm. Are you okay with that? Yep. And then, and that sort of balances me off as well, since I was a little light. And then, as we continue for new goals or priorities for this year, we can revisit this as well. So, oh, and I'm missing. Minute, what's this? I'm missing one, which is the ad hoc. Oh, right. What are we doing here? Which one? Oh, no, it, it's more of that. That was everybody's top plot. Okay. So this really so you can is bottom immaterial. Chart you can just get rid of. Yep. I've got one subcommittee because I got all the other stuff. Agree. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the ad hoc, hoc for Human right. Rights Commission. And that was... That was, was me and Barry. Yeah. Um, and we've had one meeting. I think that's something that needs to be picked up quickly. Mm -hmm. I am I am quite interested in it, and I think it could pair well with HRAC because mm -hmm. I, I think that the work yeah. of both are related. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, great. Um, 
Is there a second that would let? I mean, I can stay on, but if there's a second person that's really interested in this, I can also step you should back. Have a, you should have a partner. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, this is a. She should, but I, I tapped on on subcommittees. Mark, how are you? You currently have two. Three. Mm. I was interested to see RMLB. Mm. Oh shoot, you have three. Well, okay. I, 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 so, you know, uh, I, I, if you need me, I, I, I'll do it. Um, How many subcommittees are you on, Andy? <laughs> and can we name the working groups? But never, never that aside. Um, you have I'm on two? the housing trust, which I'm going to, I'm going to ask Mark to take the lead on um, because of my skill set <clears throat> or lack thereof. <laughs> Uh, the EDC, I'm really excited about. Um, but those and, are your two? And those are, I guess I only have two, don't I? And I have three. <clears throat> I guess I'm doing um, the ad hoc. <laughs> no, I'm fine. I'm excited about it. It's just, it's, you know, it's a question of time. Um, how often do you think that they will meet? The goal for that was monthly. Okay. There'll be a pay increase. <laughs> Thank Maybe you. Maybe you need seven members of the board. Thank you, John. Um, okay. There uh, we go. That is. So, oh. and you're going to do that too? Yes. Okay. okay. So, the other thing that we have here is the development project liaisons, and I wanted to ask if this is something we want to continue. Um, development projects? Yeah. Oh, yeah, me. like the report I gave yeah. tonight on exactly. postmark. Yes, exactly. <coughs> Um, so I don't have strong feelings on this way. Just wanted to see what the board thought about whether or not we keep these. I think it's a good idea. I had a, a challenging experience, um, but may you all fare better. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Given the fact that we are that we have got a lot of shovels around, yeah, and more to come, yeah. And we're talking about economic development in a variety of ways. People excited about being on the committee. Um, you know, potential. Yeah. You know, filling a position. Um, to kind of abandon the idea. Of, I mean, from my perspective. I will continue to meet with that developer whether we decide to not do it or not. I just think it's really important. So in that case, we have three vacancies, if, if everybody's sort of uh, in I, agreement I, with keeping I these. agree. Uh, I just we've set We've got the Main Street 40R, which is the former Sunoco station, uh, Eaton Lakeview, and Woburn Street 40B. Where are you? I can actually, you know what? Woburn Street's almost done. Yeah, Woburn Street will be done soon. Do um, so you want that one? No, oh, no, no, I don't because it's, there's nothing there to do. There's nothing to do. Um, I have no problem whatsoever, you know, taking these on because most of these things can happen. I can meet these guys at ten o'clock in the morning. Tomorrow. Stuff, you know. I mean, that's actually the, the, the preferred time to meet these to meet these developers. So to be honest with you, Mark, do you want you express some interest in um, Sunoco? Would you like that one? Yes. Yeah, I think I'd like to grab one of them. Okay. Um, and well, why then don't you take Eden Lakeview? That one's meaty. I'm, I'm flexible. Huh? Um, well, I mean, you know, it, why don't you take Eden Lakeview? Woburn's wrapping up. All right. Is that is that okay? Yeah. So who's taking Eden Lakeview? So I guess that's me, and I also have Postmark. Yeah. And then so who's going to jump three. on to uh, eMark? When that goes into the ground. Well, I have EMARC. Okay. And would you like one? Because we can. <laughs> <laughs> she shakes her head. <laughs> um, happy, happy to. Um, I also just wanted to mention the um, the Tarrant Lane mm -hmm. project. It's not um, technically in Reading, but certainly impacts Reading residents and. Uh, some of whom have emailed to to ask if I was to attend and to ask if Mark planned to attend tomorrow night's uh, board meeting in in Wakefield. And I said that I plan to to attend pending tonight's liaison uh, com conversation. So um, I know I, that may not be an official role, but I. Well, I think we can add it to it's the a list. Yeah. Yeah. I think sure. yeah. Yeah. All right. So you'll take Terrence then. That's great. great. That works. Okay, fabulous. So we are done with liaison assignments. Um, 
Who took over in Street? I'll take it. Paul, John, are we missing any? There no, might be good. new ones, We're but good. this is okay. a good list right now. Okay. So, fantastic. Um, Caitlin, do you have all of this? Do you yep. want this? Nope, I do it. Fabulous. So, next up. So, I added... Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, Mike, you got me now. Yeah, I'm excited. And we'll look forward to seeing you. Excellent. Looking forward to it. All right. So, I added two items that are new. Mike lives in that paper. Uh, yeah. um, one of them is a select board meeting structure discussion. And so, I wanted to get a feel for the board of you know, how you envision these discussions taking place. Um, there are some public bodies that have very strict formalities. They go by last names. They ask permission to speak. There are only five of us. Um, the other option is a little bit more of a relaxed format where people sort of speak freely. It's more of a dialogue. Um, I'm, I'm open to both. I'm just curious what, you know, if there are preferences one way or the other. Sorry, I missed the first part of the sentence, so I'm completely oblivious to what you're talking about. Andy. I, I was, I'm easily distracted. Uh, I said I added this as a way to get the board's opinion on how we, as a board, function more broadly. Um, uh -huh. Some boards do a very formal structure with asking permission to speak, mm -hmm. you know, M Mr. or Madam Chair. Yep. Um, others are more informal and they just have a discussion. Right. It's more casual. I'm open to both scenarios. I'm curious what the field board is. Uh, what was the this, I guess, is what I missed. You said this. Board operations. How, how we board operate. Board. How oh. we have discussions. Activities, meetings, oh. 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 oh, I see. We've moved on now from this. Thank you. Yeah, we, we're done with you. I can let go of this now. Yes. Okay, right. We're on to that part. Yes. I'm with you. So. I have a strong preference. I think when we talk among ourselves, we get a lot more done. I think it's a very effective style of communication mm -hmm. and negotiation. That's, you know, the idea of, you know, kind of in an autocratic way, um, being too formal about this. Look, um, we're here as a, as a collaborative group to get things done, and I think that if you use that, that method, Communicating through the meeting, you know, you know obviously it's got to have some management, but you got the stick, so you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, my concern is more from a timeliness perspective. We've set, we have a lot of goals. There's the next item on our agenda is future agenda discussions, and I have something like seven or eight potential items that we can talk about that go above and beyond the standard operating of the town. Right. Yeah. This is the long-term planning. This is the policy setting. This is what I see as the true mission of the board. So, my goal as chair is to try and make the meetings more efficient on the business side, so that we can get the staff what they need, and then allow us time to have discussions on sort of the fun stuff that that comes from being. Boy, well, we got a lot done tonight, and we're 15 minutes behind. Uh, which is yeah, in, in, yeah. which is in parlance <laughs> of so so you know Nothing. being efficient is sort of my yeah. driving force mm -hmm. um, madam secretary yes yeah. and madam secretary that's you <laughs> <laughs> good boy it's it's so you giving late. me my tv show it or is there something else it's been a long day it's been a long day yes um, andy i'm sorry <laughs> madam chair um uh, uh, I thought we were supposed to call her Vanessa. Well, <laughs> I'm calling her Madam Chair because Ann did. Um, <laughs> anyway. Focus. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think that it is um, 10 o'clock. We elect you to um, preside over the meeting. And I think m much of the time, I think it's important for us to ask to be acknowledged by you um, because conversations can quickly get a, get a, a get out of control. Um, but then there are times, as John says, where sort of a free flow of ideas is fine, but I think we should, someone needs to be presiding, and I think we should always look to you. I think it'll make your life easier, um, and it'll keep us, you know. Okay. 
question mark? So I generally like the informal structure. I think that it puts a lot of work onto the chair to just make sure that everyone has a chance to, to speak and that we're, we're all making that work. But structurally, I think that's the best. I think we'll have good discussions. I think we'll, we'll pretty quickly understand where we have things that we should work through. Okay. And that's my preferred style. Yeah. Uh, that's fine. I think it would be helpful for expect for expectations to be clear. I think it, it does put a lot on you to manage the, the meetings because things can get derailed um, mm -hmm. absent structure. Um, but I, I do think that I have a lot of confidence in this board to be able to get things done and communicate collaboratively and um, and less formally and so I think that we should go forward with that plan assuming that you're comfortable with managing it and I appreciate your um, your interest in efficiency efficiency because I did hear from people uh, I think before it even left um, uh, the the the, the um, election the, mm. the, the election results so you know can you see if if, if meetings can, can happen more efficiently or <laughs> in a more timely way so okay. I think um, it would be great uh, to operate in that fashion and if if it seems like the informality has resulted in things going off the rails too much we could always revisit. I think the only place that I would suggest we keep a certain amount of structure is when we have people giving presentations to us mm -hmm. to allow them to go through the entire presentation mm -hmm. and save our questions for the end. Mm -hmm. Because like what I've seen happen a lot is when we have these presentations by the staff, one person raises a question, that raises another question, and now we're you know 15 minutes off track and they still need to go back and finish. But you know, you did that tonight and it worked well, generally. I think because they had four presenters and so yeah but you were really clear started. with us that this was a listen yes you know, well sorry. that's one of the goals that yeah. i had with it's you. okay <laughs> you're new <laughs> um but you were very clear about that i mean that did spawn a million questions for me but future right. agenda yeah let's bring them back and you know and have a discussion with them great so, so other the other place I think where it would be would be helpful to have structure is when there are motion. You know, I think mm -hmm. you need to when there are motions yes. and we're figuring out what's what motions have been made. What are we actually discuss? What is the dis discussion yes, on the I table? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, okay, great. Um, one question or, or concern. Think about how to deal with it. So, if we have some a topic or a group on the agenda. The idea of kind of just listening and then putting kind of the, the only discussion onto a future agenda feels very unnatural mm -hmm. and very delayed and mm -hmm. just kind of it's you're going down a path and then it's like okay that's the end mm -hmm. and we'll come back in several weeks mm -hmm. it, to me I, that feels disruptive and not productive but don't you think that we could solve that so for example tonight was packed mm -hmm. and you know there were a couple of things here that we did not know exactly how long they were going to take i mean you know look the liaison yeah. and you know yeah. who knows how long that was going to take so i think i agree with what mark is saying the idea that you got to wait a month yeah. to ask the question doesn't feel right tonight i think I think it becomes incumbent on you, and and I'm happy to help you as as I've told you, to create an agenda that allows the presentation to end, mm -hmm. and then some Q and A for mm -hmm. discussion. Yes. But th that wasn't going to work today. I mean, it was just too. It was too, too, too many much questions. in here. Well, I think the way we did it with Bob, where we had half an hour on the agenda, his presentation was ten minutes. He adjusted to that. Um, well, wouldn't you agree with that, Bob? Yeah, I mean, that, that's, there was oh, stuff there you could have talked about, you know, but. Yeah in the okay. interest of time yeah so all right so i think this is some great feedback why don't we Can give I just it a add oh, one more thing sorry, um, i think during um, many or most public hearings you should also retain a more formal structure you mm -hmm. typically have a yes. room full yes. and that mm -hmm. sets some guidance and expectations for yeah. There's lots of time that people have never been in here before. Yeah. Oh, great. Because we can have our discussion after the public hearing closes. So right. I think that's a point I really well works. taken. Mm -hmm. so, yep. yeah. I agree. One other question. Um, 
do do we as a group feel comfortable that if there's material that we've been presented, mm -hmm. we pretty much will have read it and have at least some familiarity with what's there so that one of the things that could happen is if the presentation really replicates what we already have, maybe that's not the best use of time. Now, I understand getting out to the public is a different story, but in terms of our own thinking and deliberation, if it's in the packet, you know, I, can we take that as kind of a given and that we're working from there as opposed to, I'm just going to start at the beginning even though you've got all the material here. Yeah, let me ask a question on that. And this comes from a board many years ago. Um, we were asked as staff, not necessarily the RMLD, not to include presentations in the packet. That's fine because it means we can work on them right out on Tuesday night. Um, which is more helpful for the board to see because most of us can adjust and do it Thursday, depending on the topic. But you know, certainly a rehearsed so, presentation such as Colleen, she worked on it today, she met with him this morning, but if she knew the deadline was Thursday, she would have finished it last week. I think well, one of the conversations I had with Bob too was sort of being respectful of staff time and mm -hmm. yeah. the amount of detail that goes into these presentations. I mean, they put a tremendous amount of work into some of them mm -hmm. um, and it's appreciated, but at the same time, do we necessarily as a policy setting board need that level of depth in a presentation or my take on this is we're relying on their expertise to give us the high level. We then have an opportunity for discussion where if we have specific questions, we can go a little bit deeper. But do we necessarily need a 30-minute presentation on staff, from staff? I, think I, it I like on the, the presentation, topic, and I, and I actually don't like... I mean, the idea of seeing the presentation for the first time, I know the subject material that's coming. Mm -hmm. okay, I, you know, I had a fairly good idea where it was coming from. But frankly, I think when somebody puts the amount of time into a presentation, they need an audience that's listening. The fact that we can get it after the fact, I think is really important, mm -hmm. you know, from the, because there's a, often a time I'd like to, like I asked for that presentation. And that's the exact philosophy I shared with Colleen this morning. I said, maybe this board feels differently, but past boards have said exactly what John just said. So that if you give me the presentation, I can share it with them later, that's most helpful. I, I, yeah, whatever you want. That would be mine. I'm, I'm Mark. So that's not my preferred style, but I think it's fine if we build in the time for discussion with the with that first meeting. In other words, just to have the presentation mm -hmm. and then a gap. It, to me, that feels like three steps when it really should have been one. I guess it depends on the purpose of the presentation. Is it something that we were going to then deliberate over and make a decision on? Mm -hmm. um, and then do we want to have that material ahead of time to review it and make sure we're comfortable with it? Or is it something, if it's something like the, tonight's RMLD presentation, um, that was fine. So. Yeah, but I think, you know, Mark wanted to ask some questions because they were on his mind. I understood that. I think that tonight was just an anomaly. Yeah, I, we think that, I think normally you would be able to structure an agenda well, that would allow for the discussion you're looking normally for. Normally we have that Q&A. You know, I, I built agree with built that. Built into the timing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I yes. think that works. So, Bob, to answer your question, I think there seems to be unanimous decision agreement that after the fact is fine. Okay. Um, with I would, I would act, agree with, with Andy, however, that if we're going to be voting on something, mm -hmm. um, then it would be helpful to have it in advance because I, I process for example, you know the town manager goals, which you pr presented with the memorandum in detail. Like I'd really process that a lot more than I have yet processed the RMLD presentation. And, and like a driveway hearing, you have to make a decision that night. It's a hearing. Yes. Yeah, so we tend to throw everything at you. Yeah. That. Yeah. 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 And and um, I I also um, would like to point out um, what would, oh. The presentations themselves, you mentioned something about what level of depth to go into mm -hmm. do we, are we sort of looking for? And in order to be more productive and uh, get working on our goals, I, I agree with you. I don't think we necessarily need up front that level of detail, but we can always, you know, if we get an overall picture, we can always ask uh, more specific questions if we'd like to. I agree. I think that's great. Can I make a suggestion? Sure. The, the one caveat to that would be that folks would be prepared to answer those more detailed questions during the discussion. So in other words, if we're getting more of an overview, yeah. and then we have a question, and then it's, well, we're going to have to go back. Sometimes I understand that's 
just what it is. They'll have to go yeah. back for detail. Yeah. But generally speaking, I, I would, if we're going to get a higher level, then I think they should either in appendix or their head or both be able to address the issue as we bring it up, especially if we're going to be taking a vote on it. Yeah. So I, I think we seem to be in, in good shape there. There were two other things that I wanted to raise on that particular topic. The first is um, what are the board's thoughts on changing how we do office hours? So I had office hours this evening. Um, I had one person, but in the past, we don't always get attendees. Mm -hmm. And so is that the right, out and again, you know, we can discuss this more as, as part of the communications policy, but is that the right approach to be available to residents? Or do we want to consider an office hour at the senior center or an office hours at the schools or the library? Um, mm -hmm sporting events. I mean, I'm, I'm sort of trying to think outside the box of, you know, we're essentially asking people to come to us mm -hmm. on a Tuesday night at 6.30. I find it hard to be here at 6.30 on a Tuesday night. So I, I feel like part of our role is to be out in the community, and we do that mm -hmm. all the time, but maybe we could also incorporate a way of having office hours in the community where people are and are more likely to stop by and ask us questions. Um, how about... Um, we, we rotate at, um, if, if we, I don't know, this may not work, but just throwing it out there. People like going out to breakfast in town, and there are a lot of breakfast places in town where you can have coffee. Mm -hmm. um, and coffee with a cup. Right. Mm -hmm. I have about seven or eight hours of these every week. <laughs> yeah, so, so I, I think... Just so you know, I'm... If people are available, you know, I mean, I'm around some Saturday mornings, I'm free. And I can go, but I don't know if that works for everybody. Just a thought, because I think... So, yeah. I, I just wanted to throw that out there. I, I want to continue, because we still have to go through agendas. Um, okay. The other item, as far as format goes, is liaison reports tend to take up a lot of time. They take up about 20 to 30 minutes at the start of every meeting um, it has been recommended that the liaison reports be provided in writing in advance so that they are included in the packet so they would need to be turned in to Bob or, or Caitlin um, by Wednesday morning uh, Thursday. Yeah, you can give it like noon on Thursday. You, you, you mean Wednesday morning? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Careful, yeah. I think you really mean Wednesday morning. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wednesday. It's all about padding Wednesday. deadlines. Okay. 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 Um, so and I got then, 13 of these. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> but not all of them have, you know, not. No, but from the perspective of one, it creates a record for people that don't watch it and maybe miss the start of the meeting. Now yeah. they have something to refer back to that's in the actual packet, and it could help abbreviate the amount of time spent on liaison reports. Where if you have six liaison reports, you maybe pick the top. Two. Why would we even do them? If we're gonna, mm. if you're gonna write a report, which is fine with me, yeah, you know, it's a, it's an executive summary. Why would you even do liaison reports? I think it's important though to have, you know, <coughs> to give an update for the community. Not everyone reads our hundred to two hundred page packet every meeting. They don't. I know it's crazy. So. This way it gives, if we have particular items that are timely, when I was doing cemetery, when they change their rules, each time I would mention it. So it's just yes. a reminder. So, so I think those types of things could be included, but maybe some of the other things could be slipped into the report. Right. Into the written report. Uh -huh. So that the, was... The end goal being that if we liaison reports, they'd be short. Yes. And they'd just be, it wouldn't necessarily be a highlight of each, but it might just be a highlight of some. Yes. Yeah. And it creates a written report in the packet and maybe not imagine it as pages per liaison report, but rather just a quick summary. Couple of bullet, like a sentence. Yeah. You're, if you're going more than a sentence, it's too long, I think, generally speaking. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you have 13. This should be a good thing. So I get 13 sentences? I don't even start gusting till about six or eight hundred words. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, you know. Moving right along. <laughs> um, okay, so... Uh, all right, so uh, unless there are other topics that people want to discuss as far as format, I'm going to move on to future agendas. Great. So I thought we, I left this as a standing item on each of our uh, agendas that we discuss e both the next meetings and further look ahead for topics we want to discuss because especially if they pertain to other boards, we want to ask them to come in or certain staff. 
I think it's respectful of them and their time and their scheduling to give them a heads up that we want to work with them or, or we have questions. So some of the topics that I've sort of been jotting down over time, um, one of the issues that came up is uh, the fact that non-residents are not allowed to be voting members on town committees. There may be occasions when this is contrary to the ideal of what this committee would like to do. Um, so that's one. Um, as far as select board goals, I think an onboarding manual would be great. Yes. I think we should invite other boards to speak. I know this has been done traditionally, so sort of working them in, and if there's a priority, Bob and I, I talked about this. Um, traffic, speed, and parking is always a fun one. I think that's one we need to revisit, especially as it pertains to parking in the downtown area. Um, the DPW land. So sort of, I wrote this as reality versus dream. Like, is this a possibility, and what does that look like? And um, you know, what's our path forward? And obviously, it would rely heavily on Bob. Mm -hmm. um, I want to work with RMLD. They have a lot of really exciting developments happening. Um, you know, the electrifying vehicles. Is it possible? Obviously, that's going to require a lot of staff. We're not going to require police cruisers. That would be like you know, they have a surprising amount of pickup, but no. Um, okay, so they're faster than gas cars. Just to be clear, yeah. we, we <laughs> talked about that this morning, and it's, it's definitely a worthwhile topic. But you have to understand, they have a very long time for you. So they're yes. interested in towns with buses right now, fleets, as she said. Yeah. Um, so Reading's not really on their map just yet, but right. it's an ongoing discussion. Right. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I think none of these are necessarily going to be immediately resolved, but I think if we start talking about them, we start heading in that direction. Um, I obviously, be, I think it would be really helpful if you sort of put PTTF on a quarterly schedule or some schedule, so then we can start tailoring our meetings to hit your desires, because there's always interest in the community about one of those topics, mm -hmm. whether it's speed limits or parking or whatever. So I don't know how often that meets, but can we, we consider we that? Monthly. Hmm? We meet monthly. Monthly. Um, so how about the whatever the last meeting in June is? Okay. Would that be a reasonable time frame? Honestly, whatever you like. It uh, keeps us on a quarterly schedule is where I was yeah, thinking. Yeah, it could be quarterly. It could be a little less. I wouldn't suggest going too much more than quarterly. Right. It's not, probably not enough. Um, and then... Obviously, we talked about Bob's goals, um, so that's something we should be setting in the next few meetings to start that conversation in addition to his multi-year goals. So those are the ones that, that I had. I don't know what everybody else might want to add to that list. What was the first one you had, Vanessa? Just, just Non-residents as voting here. members of town committees. And I don't know if that's if that's even possible or not. That's a charter. It's a charter. But yes, it's, it's charter. absolutely possible. Okay. Well, we did discuss what? that as, on the charter committee, that topic. But, okay. you know, Mark can deal with the bylaw. <laughs> <laughs> Wait you write minute. that down? That's me. I'm Thank not you. on the bylaw committee. Uh, <laughs> who got that? Andy. Oh, oh Andy. <laughs> All right, make sure you write that down. I have a suggestion. Sure. Um, the presentation we had tonight from a completely independent private group was really good. I mean, you know, I think it's, it's we have probably, enough. we could take 15 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes, and invite somebody different to every meeting. And we would, I think there'd be an eye-opening experience for the people that watch and yeah. for everybody here. Yeah. And you know, they'd range from, you know. Reading Symphony. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a whole long list. I mean, mm -hmm. there's just a, there's a, Pretty much the Garden the Club is, is like the poster child. Though. Yeah. They've, got, they've been doing more things for, more, for 60 years. I don't realize how active yep. they were. I've only seen a handful oh, yeah. of what they do. And we've had them in before, mm -hmm. you know, but they kind of fell off the radar screen. I was thrilled to have them back. Mm -hmm. I honestly think that if we let them know that we were interested in what they're doing, Rotary is another one. I mm -hmm. mean, there, there's a, there's more, there's, what do we have? 25 meetings a year? 30? About that. Yes, between those two. Yeah. I'm I, I just idea, saying, if we set aside 15 minutes, a strict 15 minutes, um, and and let them know, and um, okay. let them know that they'd be welcome, and yeah. we'd set up a schedule, I think you'd find them, you, you know, we only hear from these organizations when they come in and want something, because it's the only time we really give them airtime. Yeah. 
Um, and I think that they've got a great story to tell. Okay, that's a wonderful idea. So, so it's dutifully on my list. Other suggestions? Two ideas. One is um, with each of us having 11 assignments or 13 or whatever it is, there are a lot of activities on here, and I wonder if the chairman of some of those groups might deserve a little bit of airtime once a year. Yes. Something like that. So I have that here. This was my third. It's inviting other boards to Sorry. allow them to come speak to us. And okay. Sure. Excellent. Let me get one other. So that. Um, it's not a summons. It's an opportunity. Right. You, if you'd like that's to come, the, you can. That's really yeah. the thing. Yeah. yeah. If you'd like to come, you can. It'd be great. The board would love to hear from you. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Um, the other question is, is there a way that we create schedules and, and oftentimes they can be very full for let's say the next meeting or, or two meetings mm -hmm. hence. Could we block out, let's say 15 minutes or maybe 30 is more accurate for items that may come up at, let's say at this meeting we had something that came up from public comment. We know we can't deal with it at night, mm -hmm. but rather than going and looking and saying, well, the next opening is in August, mm -hmm. might there be a way to reserve a little bit of time for if, if there's a particular item that comes up. And if not, we don't do it. But if we do, we do it. And we plan it so it fits into the agenda. It's not something that would be, if we'd anticipate it, we'd include it. But it's just, it's a, a placeholder in case there's something that comes up so that we don't have to just kind of throw everything into orbit or push it out two or three months. I think my only pause on that, I, I like it in theory. My only pause is that Sometimes when people come and they speak during public comment, their request or inquiry tends to be of a bigger scope or scale than, you know, we had the people who came must have been close to a year ago about their, the speeding concerns um, on Haverhill, and it took months to get a study done, and then the police did their part, and then they came before us. So, I think, yes, we could. I think we might have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis, though, because I... I, I completely yeah. agree. There'll be some items that don't lend themselves mm -hmm. to something that has to happen at the next meeting. Um, although, actually, in that circumstance, let's say that that topic comes up, if we want to if we want to talk about it, if I'm mm -hmm. understanding things correctly, we can't, even though it was brought up as a, well, as a problem. Well, well, I mean, there are, there is, we do have a section in the in the, um, in the agenda for items that uh, were not anticipated 48 hours prior. Um, but as, as someone who just spent a year spending a lot of his life with Bob via email um, putting together these agendas, it is, things get busy faster than you can imagine and it is a challenge to, to fit everything in. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't want to um, burden the chair with uh, having to get too many things in. You know, uh, she'll she'll talk with the town manager, and the, the, it'll they usually fill up pretty quickly. I, I think this. Oh, Bob. just I agree. It's case by case. You just have to be a little careful that you don't have what appears to be a full discussion without having invited other people into it. Yeah. So some one comes in, some groups come in, and they present something to you, and you go, yeah, that's that's terrific. But then someone watching at home or finds out the next day, well, wait a minute, I have a different opinion on that. I didn't know they were going to discuss that. So you, that's why you have to be a little careful. Yeah. Um, there's nothing wrong with learning more from someone in a night. You just have to be a little careful what you do and how you participate. Um, if you can imagine more than one side to an issue, that's the reason you just have to be a little careful. And that's the reason open meeting law tries to steer you that way. Yeah. But yeah. there's never a reason you should cut off a discussion if you're listening. Right. I, I'm thinking more of when a topic comes up and we, we, we listen and we can even inquire. Um, yeah. If the board decides that they, they'd like to learn more and do more, my concern would be if you look at it and say, well, the agenda's full for three months, we can't talk about it until then. How do you, I mean, I guess you have to adjust priorities conceivably, right? You have to go through yeah. and say, you know what, this, we should put this onto the next agenda and push something else out. What, what stops a good topic from having its own meeting? Nothing. 
Uh, yeah, and, yeah, so and, call and another meeting. remember, yeah. two yeah. two two members can always so. petition the chair to put something on the agenda. Right. So, I think Mark, I think your point is well taken, and I think I'll sort of see how that plays out. Yeah, I mean, give some. I don't. But I don't I think, have yeah. a great answer, obviously. Um, but. Are, are there other agenda items that we? You would foresee now, this probably goes to the communications policy but for example this agenda has correspondence on it that mm -hmm. we have not gone through in a full way although in the town manager report Bob mentioned that we've received a, quite a few emails on the Haverhill St Street uh, speed limit change but for, for example there was someone who emailed uh, about bike covers and right. how do we is that something that we should put on the agenda for next time or is the fact that it was here I mean we should be discussing it tonight um, how do we I, I guess uh, I don't know if this is an agenda item or if, if someone could um, clarify for me now like how do we as a board respond um, to the to residents concerns that come in in between meetings so last year we sort of came up with an informal policy that the secretary would respond to at least acknowledge the resident concerns, mm -hmm. um, CCing Bob. And so I, as a secretary, mm -hmm. took that on. That said, anyone is free to respond to any email that comes to all of us. A um, couple things to note, just from a procedural perspective, is that people can contact us either individually directly from the website or as a board mm -hmm. in its entirety. Mm -hmm. The emails that come to us as a board as a whole, Bob is CC'd. The, Caitlin. Oh, and Caitlin. Okay. Um, the emails that only go to you as an individual from the website do not go to anyone else. Which is what happened when some of those tables emails. They right. a, lot them, a lot of them. Of course, the person okay. was only sending them to one person, and so I don't get those. That's right. why they were in the packet. It's like I never even knew that yeah, email didn't know they existed. existed. Right. Uh, yeah. When he forwarded them all to the whole board this morning, sure. then I got them all. Mm -hmm. But I had never seen those before mm -hmm. until this morning. When I saw that, I sent him a note and said, hey, you know, if you want it in the packet, you have to send it to everybody. Well, and I think you not know, everyone so, knows. I mean, he just that. didn't think of that, actually. So I think he was corresponding with you. Well, and I sent and him ask a, you to I'll forward. figure out what happened, and he's already answered me, but I haven't had a chance to read it. Yeah. So from, from a procedural perspective, um, Mr. Secretary, um, <laughs> if you could take on <laughs> responding, um, I would do it in a fairly generic fashion. Um, and then oftentimes the issues are resolved by town staff and so it's just a matter of CCing Bob and he directs it accordingly and then they handle it from there but it is nice to get a response from us because they are emailing us so I think is oh, is it so um, I'm not sure I understand that so Bob already was CC if it came in mm -hmm. what is it that I can correspond other than Thanks for, for sharing your concern. So the, the resident who's emailing us via the website doesn't know that Bob got it. And okay. so to sort of to, to bring them into the loop, I would say, thanks for reaching out to the board. I've CC'd the town manager here who's who can answer your question or address, you know, something to that effect. Um, and then Bob would usually take it from there, depending on what so, she was. So Bob, for example, would the did um, the person who reached out with questions about um, making cycling cycling easier and safer and writing did I I responded as one board member mm -hmm. um, with and with a, an acknowledgement type of email but in terms of actually how do we substantively address that residents concerns or any resident who would reach out to us about any but did 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 you say this is the history of what we've had in the past? Or? So it sort of depends on what, so something like that. So there's the items that have to do directly with town government staff, um, mm -hmm. in which case I would direct them to Bob and he and the staff would handle them. There are other issues like that bike cover one that falls into a little bit of a gray zone or falls into sort of a bigger discussion, mm -hmm. in which case that might be something, and this goes to the speech to the communication policy, right where we as a board need to decide how we're going to bring up those items. Mm -hmm. Do we set them as an agenda item? Do we ask Bob to look into it? Um, so that's something that we have to determine. By way of a communications policy. I think that's the easiest way. Okay. 
Okay. I'm just thinking about, I think it should be a priority of the board to, to give residents as substance, substantive a response as we can. Yeah. Um, because I, I, to the extent I've responded to folks thus far, it's um, been with an acknowledgement. You know, mm -hmm. I'm personally, yeah. you know, yeah. care about what you've had to say, but, but without um, a resolution. Yes. Well, and sometimes that happens. We had one resident who lives near the highway that had asked about the sound barriers, and it turns out that that's actually a really complex matter. Mm -hmm. Bob's looking into it and working out at the state level um, to, to find an answer there. And I think that's that's so that's, that's totally fine. I just I feel like there there's a gap. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I just don't know if like think do things get lost or do emails do. Do resident concerns get lost in the in the high volume that come in? I mean, I, I think we try. Mm -hmm. I think your concern is legitimate, and that sometimes they do. I keep a running tab. I have a list, uh -huh. um, and so when I would talk to Bob and say, "Hey, what happened with this?" and he'd say, "Oh, it was taken care of," or "Oh, this is the status." Okay. But I think from a formality perspective, so that everybody's on the same page, I think that'd be a great thing to discuss how we want to. Yeah. figure it out and so communications policy probably the place to do it yeah and and, and I think you there's a there's a difference between responding how you, you may be especially interested in the issue that they raise mm -hmm. and I think there's nothing wrong with a representative communicating that to um, mm -hmm. a, a, a resident but you can't um, it's you shouldn't indicate how you're going to vote on something, or you, you know you can't respond for the board. But certainly um, can't respond on right. as to what the board would do. No, Absolutely. right. But I, I don't. I don't think there's anything wrong with you responding to a constituent if you're particularly interested in that. The other tool you have um, in the topic that they raise. The other tool is um, I often if it's if it's sort of a board matter rather than a town matter. I'll often refer them to the liaison that fits, mm -hmm. best fits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so are there, before we move on to minutes and wrap this up, are there any other items that you'd like to see on a future agenda? And obviously we'll revisit At some this. point we're going to have to have an open discussion about the the second water meter however it gets settled it just it's just too much noise ask. in the system on both sides of that mm -hmm. okay. so i think we just have to have a you know an open discussion about it or a, or a hearing or i don't know bob what it, however we'd handle that but we need some direction i think so i've facts. i've added that and bob what i think we can do is you and i can go over this list and see what makes sense where we can fit yeah i try to put things under future agendas near the end of your agendas so mm -hmm. sometimes that's a skinny list sometimes it's bigger all your ideas are always welcome to join that and then the board figures out through the okay. chair what you want to talk about all right so if and and this might be covered in a town manager's or in the next town manager's report but i would uh ask bob if you could just give us an update on um Behavioral Street. You said you were, yeah. had reached out to town council. If you yeah. could give us a status update mm -hmm. on what, where we are there, that yeah. would be great. great. So let's. Um, we have one set of minutes to approve. Do I have a motion? Yes. Oh, did you well, have before we, I just want to underline um, your topic of the RMLD and that land. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the, I think that's. I'd like to emphasize what what you said. We also I have the Simmons Way land now that we. Yeah, and then I'd also like to uh, uh, emphasize the land oh, Simon's way. Simon's. Yeah. Emphasize, uh, echo your thoughts on cooperating with the RMLD for um, investing in the future. Okay, great. Can I ask a question on, on that also? So we did the RMLD presentation tonight. We have questions. Mm -hmm. What should we do <laughs> with that? Should we assemble questions and then try to invite them back? Feel free to send them to me, and I can send them to Colleen. Are they going to come back? I know I've talked to some of the commissioners. I know they've expressed an interest in working with us, so I can try and arrange a joint meeting with the commissioners. I think if we have broader RMLD questions, that might be something better handled. If we compile a list of questions, send it over to Bob. He can have ask Colleen if she's willing to 
indulge our list of questions. She's, she's, I've been working with her the past year. She's fantastic. No, no, I'm sure she will, but I'm just thinking so uh, we're individually sending questions. Bob would accumulate the questions. Then, yes. the, then the responses would come to all of us. Yes, it's not and a matter in, of in a future pack. In a future pack, and then if we decide we still would like to talk, then we'll bring that up. Mm -hmm. We can just yeah. I know, I know. This it feels wasn't. awkward. Yeah. <laughs> or can go through your, one of your liaisons or both of your liaisons. Your You're a liaison. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask questions That's at the true. meetings. All right, so let's move on, get these minutes done. Do move I have a motion? Board, sorry, move that the board approve the meeting minutes of April 16, 2019 as proposed or amended, depending on what happens here. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Um, any discussion, edits to these? I'm, I, I apologize, Caitlin, but I got nothing. <laughs> <She's> devastated. <laughs> um, I don't have anything either, John and I do. Great. All those in favor? Wow. All right. Stop. Uh, we are adjourned. Oh, yeah, thank you. Oh, shoot. Motion. So <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? A second. All those in favor? <sighs>